once more with feeling. Hey there, cats and kittens. It's me, your weird Uncle XB, coming at you yet again with another Banners of Ruin run. So, <clears throat> this is going to be a Banners of Ruin ruin run. Specifically, I'm going to be doing the Sticks and Stones uh, challenge. I have completed I have completed this once, but when I did, I tried to downplay the uh, the ruins in my deck. I beat I cleared this challenge by basically ignoring it. Um, <clears throat> I got rid of the ruin cards in my deck, which were the, the ragged claws that all of my strikes were replaced with, and I did not add any additional ruins to my deck. This time, I'm going to lean into it. I don't usually like doing ruin... I, I don't usually like doing ruin runs, specifically because of the, the ruin mechanic. You don't have any control over what card you're going to get when you ruin a card. Um... There is a pool that they can that they can pull from. It'll be under the compendium. It'll be under ruin. So there are even there's even one that I haven't ever seen. <clears throat> All of these the uh, ruins in question can be any of these. Some of these are some of these are actually extremely powerful. Like for example, feverish onslaught when used properly can be very very strong. Uh, this symbol, by the way, hysterical that causes the character to lose all of their armor and more armor cannot be applied as long as that debuff is on. And they can also be things that are uh, uh, plainly catastrophic, like Absence, which on cleanup, party just leaves, loses three vitality. Now, the specific... Get me back here. The specific... The specifics of the uh, challenge that I am doing. Sticks and stones. So first of all, all the strikes in my starter deck will be replaced by Ragged Claws. Ragged Claws are a very basic uh, ruin. It is five damage outgoing, one damage incoming, and because I have Heathens up with this challenge, damage dealt by ruin cards is doubled, so those, jag those uh, uh, Ragged Claws will do ten damage, but damage received from them is quadrupled. That is specifically the reason why I will not be taking Iris this time. Well, that's part of the reason. The other reason is that Iris is a little overpowered. The more I have played with Iris, the more I have been just dumbstruck by how strong that fox is. I keep on uh, trying to do... Uh, I keep on trying to do personal challenges for myself. Like, how hard can I make this to where I, I can't actually clear this with Iris? And the answer is, there's not a whole lot I, I can... I, I have to actually work to break the game so that Iris can't win. Iris is ridiculously powerful. Uh, I wanted to do a triple health run, but the last time uh, I did a double health run and the resulting recording was six and a half fucking hours long. And I don't want to do that again because I do want to have time to do other things on this lovely Saturday. So here is what we're going to be doing. Uh, first off, we're going to go through what the mods are. Number one, Heathen's damage dealt by ruined cards is doubled, but damage received from them is quadrupled. Uh, fragile, the um, <clears throat> all armor gains are going to be reduced by 25%, and cultists, bleed applied by party members is increased by 50%, but any bleed they gain no longer ticks down. So, I am going to need to be extremely careful about bleed that these guys take on. I will be bringing a beaver for the uh, frontline security, and I'm also going to be taking a weasel to make better use of cultists. Um, <clears throat> apart from that, this is going to I mean it is, it's going to be kind of a, a breath of fresh air to be able to actually play this game without having artificially increased everyone's health, because that's basically all I've been doing uh, offline. I am not going to be t uh, starting off with Omen to ruin an additional five skills, because I've already got four, three, I've already got three Ragged Claws in my deck, and um, in order to ruin another five skills, it would be withdraw and probably rush, and then all three of my guards, and then I don't have any armor. And armor gains are already going to be a little difficult. So we're going to start with charity. But other than that, I am going to be nice. I am going to be leaning into uh, ruins. I'm going to be aiming for cards that uh, make better use of ruins, and I'm going to be aiming for encounters which will force me to ruin my, uh, my cards permanently. I will also 
not only will I be uh, aiming for cards that take advantage of the ruins in my deck, I'm also going to be aiming for cards that ruin my cards in hand and uh, passives and talents that make use of that as well. It's the other reason why I'm taking a weasel. They happen to have quite a few of those. And this is dog shit garbage. Absolutely not. Um, is this worth taking a mulligan? This might be worth taking a mulligan because I didn't get anything out of that. Give me one second. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, uh, I am giving myself one mulligan and one retry. The retry is going to be if I get killed before uh, <clears throat> I reach the end of Street 2. If I, if I get killed before I... If I lose before I reach the end of Street 2, uh, I, I'm going to call it quits. Um, otherwise, I will start over. And this was my one mulligan. And my challenge, once again, was going to be... Sticks and stones. I don't really talk about this this uh, uh, challenge very often. Uh, it is a pretty fun challenge, but the the reward that you get for it, I don't think I've ever actually used. It's expensive. It is card draw, but it's very expensive for card draw. And there are other I mean, there are other cards that uh, do the same thing. Anyway, moving on. So charity, pray. Okay, cool. I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. Uh, we're going to be increasing my weasel's will. And give me one second. Let's reconfigure some combat positions. So I have my beaver in the front row, acting as front row security. I have my weasel in the back row, acting as the muscle. And everything looks good to me. All right, here we go. Forgotten tunnel. Raucous laughter echoes down the dark, damp tunnel. The enders won't suspect a thing. Oh, we being sneaky. You emerge from the black and find yourself in one of the guard bunks. Where the devils did you come from? You can't be here! Yeah, that's right. I'm doing the voices again. And this time, I'm going to try to do accents that I know for a fact I can't do. Y'all's in for a treat. All right, so give me one second. Um, it's been a while since I've done just a, a basic... It's actually been a very long time since I've done just a basic run, including... Uh, Two regular starting characters and no heroes. Um, <clears throat> you know, nothing to it, just, you know, pointing it out. It's been a while since I've done this. Now, that is actually really, really nice. The 50%... Wow! Hmm. Okay. The 50% additional... Uh, the 50% uh, additional bleed... Uh, brings the three bleed up to four, which is not a huge increase, but honestly, it's quite nice. None of these, unfortunately. And I'll take a no mercy just because I do need, I want to have at least one zero cost card in case I pick up a gem. Informant, a hooded figure looms in the dim night. It seems they've been expecting you. As you turn a corner, you find yourself confronted by a wiry figure, their identity masked by the dim light, but their noble birth betrayed by their fine robes. I know where you've come to Dawn's Point. The low, dry voice echoes off the cold stone. I can help you reach him. My family are being held captive in Old Town. Help us flee the city, and I will arrange you entry into the keep. Find a boat, and free my family, and meet us in the sewers below the royal court. Do as I ask, and you will have your blood. You exchange a solemn, understanding nod with the old wolf before he sharply hurries off. I was scared for a second that I was going to put, like, a dumb accent on him, and then I didn't. And, uh, you know, nothing, nothing. Just just pointing that out. I was scared for a second that I was going to do a dumb thing, and then I didn't. And I, I kind of regret not having done the dumb thing. I feel like the dumb thing would have been fun. Moving along. Okay. So... This actually is quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, okay, wow. Well, damn, okay. It's like, you know, this is so far, uh, it's a, a pretty auspicious beginning in terms of, of uh, early game power. I'm taking tensions. <sighs> okay, so. <clears throat> Off-duty guards, I'll deal with later. As uh, I, I'm, I'm. Uh, there's nothing I can do with it right now. Intelligence. This 100 experience is not enough to put my boys, boys, girls. What are you? Uh, Doran Fortright and Larry Yanning. So my boy, my 
my uh, lady and my gentleman. Uh, it's not enough to put them over to level two. Fortune teller, on the other hand, every time I've gone to the fortune teller, it has gone very badly for me, which is why I should probably do it at least once. So let's do it at least once. Jesus Christ. The cards aren't this. Oh, wow. No, absolutely not. Let's try to get a fortune teller voice. <clears throat> The cards aren't the same anymore, the mouse murmurs as you walk past. I bet you thought I was going to do a Romani accent, but no, I'm not going to do that, because that would probably end up being a little racist, because I'm not Romani. She draws an exquisite card from the top of the deck, showing a great tree ablaze with topaz flame. The burning tree is forever drawn now. I've forgotten that this is supposed to be a she. She just sounds like my wizard voice. Whatever. She returns the card to the deck, cycling through them slowly. I can read your path, friend, but know that many forks on the road have burnt away like the branches of your precious tree. <sighs> okay. Walk the withered road. We're going to gain a random card. Here we go. A lost twin, she remarks. Haunted by your past. Granted flashback. Flashback? What the fuck is flashback? What did I get? Flashback. Unplayable. When drawn, spawn a wraith to a random vacant position. <sighs> this is why I don't go to the fucking fortune teller. The wraith in question, if you've seen any of my runs before, the wraith is the one that throws panic around, and I need to get this shit out of my goddamn deck. This is exactly the reason why I don't like doing ruin runs. Alright, so let's get the uh, money from the drunken guards. Uh, hmm. I think I'm, I think I have enough juice to take on a heavy patrol this early. Yeah, I absolutely do. That's awesome. Okay. I'm doing fine with this. So this, I'm pretty sure I can just knock you. Nope, I cannot. Everybody's hitting the, all right, that's fine. Everybody's hitting my barricade. This really feels like a waste. Okay, nope. I'm going to practice what I preach this time. This is this is very important information if you are a reasonably new player, if you have been struggling with the game. One of the worst, not worst, it's not one of the worst things that you can do, but a bad habit that you might have is you look at a card that's going to do more damage than the uh, enemy has. And it feels, this is this really feels like a waste. This feels like I'm spending a, uh, I'm spending a stamina and I'm spending a card on something that is is just, it's overkill. Here's the thing. The single most important thing that you can possibly do in this game is to reduce the number of incoming actions. Anything you can do to permanently reduce the number of incoming actions is good. If you can reduce incoming actions by at least one, either by killing a guy or by displacing them so that you delay their round, that's a is 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 a good. That's a oh, nope. You're not gonna break. Okay, yeah, you're fine. Fine. Two by three. You've actually got six armor. I should have booted the other one. Eh, whatever. I lost track of what I was saying, and also this guy's gonna die anyway. So, if you have a card that will kill something, even if it is overkill, if there is nothing else that you can do, if the choice is between spreading some damage around and actually killing a target. The correct choice, objectively, is always going to be killing the target. I'm certain there probably are some exceptions to that, but just as a general rule of thumb. <sighs> Fuck, man. Okay. So that's what this fucking flashback is going to do. Whenever I draw this fucking card, it's going to banish itself and spawn a wraith. If this card dies from damage that wasn't dealt by an attack, a torment will be person will be permanently added to my deck. So naturally, I have a lot of bleeds. Oh my god! Uh, and this asshole he throws around panicked, which ticked his, it ticks down by one every time you play a card. And once, oh my god, as two times pacified, I should have paid attention to what I was doing there. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna focus on the wraith as best as I can, anyway. Sixteen damage coming in on Fortnite and UK buddy. Yeah, sweet. I love you too. All right. Uh, he is still pacified, so he's just going to stand there and take it. 
And I'm going to rely on you for quite a bit here, Yenny. And we don't really have that much damage. Okay. That's the reason why I basically never go to that fucking fortune teller, is because every time I go to that horrible, horrible bitch, she saddles me with this fucking card. And I'm sure that she thinks she's doing a good thing for me, but, um, fuck her. You know. What, what a bitch. What a bitch. That wasn't necessary. Uh-oh. Let's find out. So he's gonna die from his bleed. Oh no, he's not gonna die from his bleed, so we can't... Okay, thank God for that. Alright, I thought that I had just screwed up really, really badly. But as it turns out, I had only screwed up by allowing that card to exist in my deck. Alright. We're all set. None of these. And I'll take a reserves. Yes, buddy. Hello. Oh, good. Okay, I'll take that spear. This battle axe is... This battle axe is not actually substantively better than the hatchet that Fortnite is already using, and it costs more for not a really huge amount of extra bonus, of extra benefit, rather. The longsword is nice for a starting weapon, but you should discard it as quickly as possible, frankly. Of all of the starting weapons, the longsword kind of is the... Uh, I mean, it's fine. It hits a rank, and it's not super expensive, but it's only eight weapon damage. Moving on. <coughs> Excuse me. So Fortright and Yanning are both level two. I keep on trying to give Prime the benefit of doubt because uh, the place I go to to get uh, the, the, my my, the, my favorite grocery store um, <clears throat> right near the uh, in a in a when I'm visiting a buddy of mine who works there it's it's right by this huge display that they have of prime hydration drinks and every time I look at it with the bright colors and my dumb fucking brain I'm like yeah you know. It, it, People talk about this shit. I see, I see references to this shit all over the place online. I mean, like, it, maybe it's just me, and I keep on trying to give it a chance to not be dog shit. But oh my god, every fucking flavor of this I have tried is so goddamn bad. Anyway, ah, uh, here we go. So, um, huh? Well, I don't like this. I don't like any of this. I'll take blockade, even though I really don't like it. And that'll be, uh, there are several encounters that could potentially allow me to uh, swap out my talents. And as for Yenning, uh, hmm. yeah, that'll do. Incision is fine. And uh, let's give him another stamina because I did already have the opportunity to add an additional um, bleed. I would go after the fight or flight because we are very strong, but I don't want to f I don't want to deal with the wraith while dealing with fight or flight. We are going to be dealing with that wraith every fucking combat at the very least. Yes, buddy. No, so sorry. Until I can find some way of until I can find a way of removing it permanently from my deck. All right. Yes, Smudgy wants attention, and uh, I am being very rude and boring by uh, not being, frankly, not being in bed right now. Uh, <laughs> yes, buddy. Yes, I know. I love you, too. Not being in bed right now, being a cat bed for uh, him, his brother, and his sister. The the, the sacrifices that I that I that I do for for. This tiny little channel. <laughs> no, seriously, it's difficult. Uh, give me one second. So, this thing, I, 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 what are you doing? Ooh. I am going to need to deal with that right now. I don't like that. Shoot. Okay, well, that's a problem. All right, so here's what's going to happen. Um, I was not paying attention. He's now only taking one bleed, but the problem is is that his bleed is not going to tick down. 
because of the nature of the because of the nature of the uh, the mod that I put on. I should have paid closer attention to that before I loaded the wraith up with bleed. Eh, it is what it is. What it is is only slightly, only slightly frustrating. My own stupidity. All right, so that's it. That. It's 19 damage coming in on my barricade. Okay. Okay, he's still only... I'm all right with that. He's still only uh, aiming at the, at the barricade. Oh, no. Oh, no. So let's take ruination this time. And also, I did I did it get added to my car? Did I I don't see it. I, I see flashback. I don't see. Okay, maybe I didn't. It looked like it it did the uh, I saw the animation for the ruin has been added to your deck, but it looks like it didn't actually add. Okay, I don't see it. The uh, w what I'm looking for is is that if those wraiths do not die to a weapon attack, they will put a really really shitty ruin directly into your deck, which I don't want. <sighs> wow. Oh boy. Well, <sighs> yeah, you know what? May as well just get that pacified out over with. Not like that. Okay, so 15 damage coming in at Yanning, and I don't have... don't really have a ton of armor. Shit. Because my armor generation has been reduced by a quarter. Oh dear. I may not actually be able to do this. I did say I'd give myself one do-over if I die, if I lose before I get to the uh, the end of... Oh, Jesus Christ. Six damage. I only have one rune in hand. Ooh, boy. Deliberately did not do the ruin that. Oh, hmm, that's nice. Just push that out of the. Okay, good, good. As long as he's, as long as he's actually hitting the. Uh, <laughs> he's going right. He does not like that barricade. My boy here is very anti-barricade. All right, so let's try to get some armor back on. My party. I was gonna say my boys, but one of them is a lady. So my boy and girl. My guys. There, that's unisex. Okay. All right. Who? Absolution, even though I cannot use it yet. Oh, that was a bad idea. Because I cannot use it yet. No, I can. Yanning does have four stamina. I might be able to. Ooh. I am... I am sweating. I'm not doing great. Oh, for fuck's sake! That fucking Wraith! And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say literally every single time I have gone to that encounter. Every time I have gone there, 
the Wraith is the only option that I get. I don't know if there are other options. That's It is specifically the reason why I have studiously avoided it on the three previous recordings that I've done for my channel since the Wraith has been added. This, this encounter has been added, and I... It's... I don't... I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. It's ass. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Can I clear? No, I cannot. 10 damage. Shit. Well, I'm definitely going to take it in the pants. Shit. Sixteen damage. Wow, I am I am not doing great. I'm not doing great. Oh boy. All right, um, 12 damage coming in at Fortright, and Fortright only has 10 health. The only thing I could possibly do is move Fortright out of the way using the last will I have on Yanning. This is not going to be a successful run. I can already see that right now. Mistakes were made. <laughs> 25 damage that I... Might I might be able to? Might I be able to? Let's see. <sighs> Ruination was not the correct choice. I made a uh, I made several choices that were incorrect. That is the end of this game. That eight damage is going to... Okay. It's not necessarily the end of this game. <sighs> Fuck me. Oh, and that two is not ticking down. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Nope. Uh, we're not going to be able to gaslight girl keep gate boss <laughs> our way out of this one. All right. <laughs> nope, that's it. We are done. All right, so that is going to be my first do-over. Holy shit. What a catastrophic failure. Uh, okay, so let's review what went wrong there. I made several very poor choices in terms of ruin. I don't usually do ruin runs, so... Um, I'm making excuses for the fact that I, I made some very poor choices in terms of cards. Also, uh, lesson learned, I am never going back to that fucking fortune teller. I, I am never going back to that fucking fortune teller. I, I, un, unless, unless it is with a gun. Now, what a bitch. What a bitch. There was no reason for her to have done that to me. There was no reason for her to have done that to me. What a bitch. All right. Take two. Second verse. Hopefully, somewhat better than the first. Let's try again. Still going to do charity. And I am still going to try to lean into... I'm still going to try to lean into uh, the, the ruins of it all. <laughs> Ooh. Um, hmm. Eight max vitality, because that's for the entire party. And that'll do. Forgotten Tunnel. Once again. You emerge from the black and find yourself in... Oh, I've already done all this. Just, you know, rewind if you need to. Like, go back to when I, where I read this before. And then read it again. Excuse me. I need a piece of chocolate. And I, like a big fucking genius, 
completely forgot to change my. Uh, I completely forgot to change their their. Uh, good lord. Hmm. Oh, that was overkill. My bad. For a hot second there, I completely forgot that uh, uh, Gray's bleeds are going to be doing four bleed instead of three. So I went on the board. All right. Uh, rear guard is actually pretty good. And let's not forget this time. Combat positions. Beaver on the top. Weezer in the middle. Weasel in the middle. I'm not going to read the informant again. I've already read this one. Moving on. All right. Just eight damage coming into my barricade. I also need to be a lot, I think, a lot more careful about how I am throwing those, those, uh, hmm. what the hell is it called again? The Ragged Claw. The, um, so just to, to point out a thing that is happening, the Ragged Claw, uh, it does five damage and it, uh, takes one damage. Now, because of the nature of this, uh, because of the nature of this challenge, the outgoing damage is up to 10, which is very, very good. And the incoming damage is also up to 4. And in addition, all of my armor gains are nerfed by 25%. Which means, um, <clears throat> if I'm not, if I don't pay attention, and sometimes I don't, brace is good. This early on, that brace is going to be very good. If I don't pay attention, and paying attention is, oh my fucking god! Are you, are you apologizing to me, Banners of Ruin? Is that what is happening? Are you saying I'm really sorry about the fucking fortune teller? All is forgiven? All is forgiven? Hello, the Kilderkin. Ah, the weasel yells, stopping abruptly. Watch that cobble by your left foot. Terribly set. Makes you wonder where the tax goes. You point to a small crack in the side of the barrel, which is leaking a thin stream of crimson powder onto the street. The otter gasps, quickly plugging it with a crude wedge of cork. Thanks, friend. Could have lost a leg to that. Powder's a tricky business. He nods to the weasel, who rests the barrel on the ground and unplugs three corks, each revealing a different color of powder. Say, you need a net? You need of any? Yes, yes, we are in need of any. We're going to be taking that red powder from you. Thank you very much. Ugh. Shit. What a terrible draw. Right, let me explain what I'm looking at. I don't want to use back alley because I don't want to discard a card that I do not see. I don't want to discard a uh, an event that I do not see because it could be something really valuable. I also want to allow off-duty guards to take itself down because then I get the 300 bucks from it. And I cannot take large crowd because of this. It's fully blocked. <sighs> that sucked. Taking the drunken guards because I do need that money. Speaking of which, that could have been bad. I only had 86 bucks. Uh, if I had not taken that, I would not have been able to afford the uh, the the boat or the informant. All right, so that is 20 damage coming into my barricade. 10 damage on shipwright. Shipwright is going to spend this turn bulking up on armor as best as he possibly can, anyway. Two and three. That's everything I've got. Yes, but I love you too. Hello, Nemo. Everybody say hi, Nemo. It is Nemo. Alright, what are you doing? You'll die to your bleed. Oh, hmm. Yeah, I feel better about that then. 
And let's boot this guy to the rear so that we can preserve his three stacks of overwhelm. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Ugh. All right, so I did not pay attention. Um, <clears throat> what I should... Nah. What I should have done was different. I should have done. I. I. I that was a misplay. Uh, not. It's not going to be a world-shattering, world-game-ending misplay. But it. It. Uh, I have, by not paying attention to the cards in my hand and the other cards in my hand before throwing a particular one, I have. Uh, I didn't realize that Shipwright was not going to be able to use either of the, either of the uh, uh, other attack cards in my hand. So I could have actually pumped out a little bit more damage this round, but I didn't because of stupidity. All right. You'll die from your bleed. All right. Invigorating blow is perfect. So, Focus Fire, I will fucking take. I'll absolutely take a Focus Fire this early on in the game. I'm also going to up uh, Gray's Will to two so that we can have two braces of shivs. And I'm going to stop myself. I did say I would lean into ruining cards. That's what I'm going to do. Is this really worth it, though? I don't really like this. No, I'm not going to take it. Yeah, I am going to still try to lean into ruining cards, but this isn't amazing. I don't have anything currently that will benefit my weasel from ruining cards. And uh, eight crippled when I don't have any displacement. Well, I have kick, but that's it. And spawn one concealed blade. It's not a zero cost concealed blade. So the, in order to get the full benefit from this card, I will need to use three Stamina. So instead, I'm just going to do Nefarious and get the card draw. All right. I'm thinking about it. So, just to explain what I'm thinking about, Boat Merchant has two on its counter. Shield Maiden and Combat both have one. I am not at all close to level three. So let's just... What I should do is grab the Shield Maiden and then go to the Boat Merchant. Get, uh, um... But there may be something more valuable under... Well, let's take it. We're going to roll the dice. I'm going to take the Shield Maiden. As you pass in front of the wolf, she fiercely wipes away a stream of tears from her cheek. Hey, you! She barks, moving to block your path, but lacking the haste of a younger soul. I'm taking you in! She heals. She heaves her shield to her cheek with great effort but even greater zeal. There's no way they can retire me now, she mutters bitterly. The route ahead is firmly blocked, but she'd be too slow to keep up if you ducked into a nearby alley. Oh. I could just run away from her and ruin a skill permanently. That is a thing I could do. Do I want to do that? See, the problem with leaning into a ruin run is that it, it's... it's, it's Tasking me to take options that I don't want to do because I don't think that they are objectively correct. Damn it, I'm just going to enter the combat. Klaatu, I am very sorry. I know I said I would try to do a ruin run, but I'm 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 fighting against my my instincts, and my instincts are winning. I am sorry. Good round one. So the shield maiden is actually uh, as much as as much as that intro made her seem as though she is going to be a pushover. Shield maiden is actually pretty much a a uh, an act two act three kind of of uh, encounter in the first round. She only appears in the first street. I mean, what are you hitting? Uh, yeah, okay. You know what? <laughs> 
10 stacks of overwhelm is really nice. It's very stupid, but it is really nice. Why didn't that go away? Interesting. None of these. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, you know what? Deep Breath sounds like it might be a good idea. Again, oh my god. I really did plan on doing this as a Ruin run, and I, I'm, I'm, I don't seem to be doing that. I'm taking Digging Deep. God damn it. The wolf staggers back and falls into the wet dirt, her shield flying from her grasp. It crashes into a nearby crate, revealing several more of different sizes. Oh, there's just a bunch of shields. All right, then. She hangs her head in shame, but gestures to the discarded shields at her side. Take your pick. It's no use to me now. I'm spent. I guess they were right. She unbuckles what remains of her cloak, shedding her pauldrons with barely a dull clang on the cobbles below and wearily trods off behind. Oh, uh, you know what, lady? At least you're alive. Because we kill just about everybody else. Uh, we'll view three different shield weapon cards, sure. And uh, they are not better than what we have. Don't need to heal, but I will take this. I rolled the dice on there not being anything better than uh, what was on the board before when I went after the shield maiden, and I won. There was not anything more more interesting that I would have had to pass up. As you approach, you approach the merchant. Let me try that again. You approach the merchant who stares through you with glassy, blind eyes. One more time. You approach the merchant who stares through you with glassy, blind eyes. Greetings. What can an old fisher do for you? Wow, that is not sinister at all. You, it, the voice, I mean, I'm using. You explain you need a boat sent to the northern sewers. No questions asked. Don't like the sounds of what you're up to, but the less I knows, the better, he says reluctantly. 150 florins and you'll have your boat. If that don't suit you, I got other stuff to trade. I don't know. I, I decided that uh, he was probably using a fake voice, and uh, he probably lost track of what accent he was doing halfway through. Uh, we're going to arrange the boat to be sent to the royal court. I'm just going to stop paying attention to the dumb shit that I'm saying. Another fight or flight? How ballsy am I? This is a dumb idea. There you are, a voice. There you are, a voice declares as you emerge from a stifling back alley. Run them down. Bad feeling about this. Okay. Well, this might not be, this might be the end of my game again. XV, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Luckily, most of that damage is coming in on the barricade. I did not bother throwing out a brace of uh, shivs because I would not have been able to throw all of them. And now I will. So 20. Oof. Hmm. So first of all, let's completely ignore that one. Let's have you. Let's make sure that this one dies. Just about. This wouldn't... It would not have killed them immediately, and also that's not an incoming action. So I've got 20 damage that is going to be ignored, and then my barricade is just going to get knocked down. And there's nothing I can do about that. I forgot to hit end turn. Alright, so that is 12 damage top row. Eight damage coming straight in towards gray. I'm thinking, give me a second. I don't know if that was the best choice, but it's the one I'm taking. This one. Ten damage going over here. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Should have thrown out the bleed. Well, damn. First of all, I've got 18 damage coming in on the top, so let's let's deal with that right away, shall we? So first of all, out on the back row, and then armor up, and then do my best at arboring up. That is pathetic. The 25% hit to armor gains is really hurting. they're still spreading that shit out. But I do have a thing I can do. So, um, just to explain what's what's uh, what's going on in my head. So, uh, Invigorating Blow, again, this is one of my favorite cards, and it's, uh, it's one of a very small handful of cards that are not uh, directly involved with uh, uh, card draw or Overwhelm that I do recommend having. You know, it's not recommend, but it's not a bad idea to have more than one of them in in your deck. It's just eight damage, but it's eight damage for zero stamina. And if the final damage dealt is thirteen or more, you gain two stamina and also for restoration. This is very important because uh, one red powder, those three shots of uh, the three stacks of overwhelm, is enough to put this over th or at or over thirteen damage. So. Uh, Gray just put on four restoration, which is going to help her. I think I forgot to check uh, a lot. We are absolutely ten damage coming in. All right, well, let's just rid of you completely then. All right, so ten damage is going to be hitting Gray, but I do have some restoration running on. Oh boy, that's no good. Oh no, okay, so this one's only going to be gaining... Alright, so uh, the wolf is only going to be gaining 10 armor, and this fucker... This fucker... It's on my last nerve. Alright, so 10, no... Alright, so this only deals... This only uh, leaves bleed if... Uh, uh, if that hit does any vitality damage, it will not be doing vitality damage. It will not be doing vitality damage. And I can seal the deal here, but it is going to hurt me. Yep. Not too much, though. Because I do have that restoration going. There's a lot of things I need. Oh, boy, that's... Oh, good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, hit brace, so this hit will just be completely ignored. Twelve damage. We can handle that. That's not a problem. Uh, let's. Who do I want to have some more? All right, we're gonna have uh, shipwright. We'll have shipwright getting some uh, health regeneration going. Also build up a little bit more armor. Okay. I feel a lot more comfortable right now. To the point where I'm okay with sort of... Um, I, I might... Uh, I'm okay with spinning this out a little bit. To allow that uh, restoration to tick up a bit, I've I've taken quite a lot of damage. So let's move to the head. Okay. 
Okay. What I want is, because this wolf has focused fire on them, it's not going to be very difficult to get them back up to the point where I can... Uh... Actually, uh, there's no need for me to be spinning this out. This motherfucker already has a shit ton of health, so... I really should not be uh, fucking around. Because that's exactly what happened to me last run. For some reason... God damn it, where the hell's my invigorating blow? Down with it. 18 damage. Shit. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's no need for me to be artificially spinning this out, seeing as how the, the, this guy actually does have a huge... This is a... Uh, this guardsman right here is is the same uh, class archetype as the uh, the shield maiden that we just saw. It's a, a second street encounter. So there's no need for me to artificially spin this out. It is actually uh, quite dangerous and has a lot of health and armor. And we're done. Okay, that was actually, that went great. That went great. I am satisfied with that. None of these. And none of these. Okay, I'm going to take that superior heavy armor, but I'm not going to put it on just yet. Because superior heavy has two stacks of winded every turn. That means that shipwright would only be able to have one one stamina to work with every round, which, no. Uh, so, let's see. It is Tristan shipwright and Maylor Gray. So, I'm going to assume this is both fellas. This is both fellas. It looks like your presence in the city is becoming noticed. It's only going to get harder from here. Actually, as far as this street is concerned, that's about as hard as it's going to get. Taking the hesitation to make sure that I do not take any incidental damage. Courage is very good this early on. Uh, okay, good. So, Courage is a... Uh, this is one of the encounters that you should be steering towards. Uh, it is worth one permanent stamina in exchange for one of your dudes will take a hit to... Uh, a, a hit directly to the vitality for 10 health. Shipwright exhaustively bludgeons the lock with their weapon until it finally thunders open. Quick, get in! As Shipwright begins to heave the doors shut, a deft arrow finds its mark in their shoulder. You disappear into the shadows. And that's our first crossroads. All right. Going for the slightly more dangerous combat. a lot of damage incoming. Uh, well, it's not a huge amount of damage incoming, but it, it's, it's, it is some damage that is incoming, I should say. Alright, so... No, not going to cast that, because I don't want to consume the anticipation. That first eight will get soaked by the anticipation, so I will only take three red damage, which still isn't great. This peasant, this uh, the bunny in the bottom row, whose facial expression I am just noticing is fucking. That's amazing. Look at look at, God the. De I know I point this out literally every fucking time I run this game, but the artwork in this game is just extraordinary. And it makes me deeply, deeply happy every single time. So, uh, let's see. We're going to boot this one to the back so that all the incoming fire is only going to be on the barricade. Uh, this peasant will die from their bleed. And let's start working on the one in the back. The one in the back... The, the two rabbits, I've noticed, do the most amount of damage. The, uh, the beaver in the middle with the push broom, by the way, uh, mostly seems to do a lot of uh, displacement. See? Hmm. Um, sure. Actually, I really... I don't... 
fucking listen to myself. What I should have done right there was aim that at the peasant so that <coughs> the 18 bleed that is already on it would have actually killed it and thus re uh, permanently reducing the amount of incoming uh, actions. But I don't ever listen to myself. I mean... <sighs> Alright, so I'm going to swap out the... Uh, I'm swapping out the hatchet for uh, the club. It is... It's only one more damage, but it does have the three vulnerable, and I don't otherwise have a source of vulnerable. I've talked about the halberd before. It is... Uh, there's. It does an awful lot, but it's just way too expensive. And we are now level three. So, big money, no whammies, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, actually, that's fucking great. Yes, yes, yes. I'll take that unholy, absolutely. And I will also upgrade stamina to five. Now, now that your stamina is a comfortable, a sensible five, I'm going to upgrade shipwright to heavy, uh, superior heavy. So at the very least, my front row can actually be secure. Uh, <clears throat> and we're going to drop that uh, medium armor as we no longer need it. So, here we go. Ah, okay then. Hmm. Well, Vengeful I'm not taking because that's five rage whenever an ally dies. And I have not taken anything that ruins cards that would allow this, this cold-blooded to be uh, valuable. Every fucking choice that I make takes me farther and farther away from doing a pure ruin run. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't, I can't change who I am. <laughs> Uh, we're going after the hidden gem, and that bleed is great. We're going to put that bleed onto where are you? F rush. So we're going to put that on here, so that now we have a card that does nine bleed. Very happy with that. Uh, hmm. Good question. Fish Butcher is actually pretty interesting. I know that the fish... Well, okay, so I have I have not gone to the Fish Butcher uh, on, a, uh, on a recorded run, so I may as well do it at least once. You walk up to the bear as it slices the head off the largest salmon you've ever seen in one heavy sweep of his cleaver. What can I do you for, he says gruffly, without turning his attention from the table. Normally it's only fish, but I know who you are. Father was from Braxwood just outside church. He slams his cleaver into the bench, wedging it several inches deep in the oak. He meets your eyeline. Those wolves deserve butchering more than these fish, he barks. He barks. I'll gladly butcher them. I, I, Okay, so I have three options. Uh, replace all strikes with butcher, which is a very interesting card that I'm not going to take because I've already replaced all of my strikes with... I've already replaced all of my strikes with... Uh, Ragged Claws, so this will do nothing. It's a really interesting card. It is... Two stamina, but it re refunds three stamina, but you also gain uh, one winded. So it it sort of weirdly evens itself out. Dels, it deals eight damage and it takes two damage. So that would end up being, I would deal 16 damage, which, which would be fucking great. And I would take eight damage, which would fucking suck. Uh, but there's, there's no point in this because I don't have any strikes in my deck. They have all been replaced with Ragged Claws. So the other option is, I'd like a go at that thing. Uh, or I could just take a fish, which is it restores five vitality five times. And then uh, at the fifth time, it's just it's just basically a ruin. It is a, a curse in my deck. I'd like to go with that thing. However, I'm going to take this man's cleaver and I am going to swap out the uh, I'm going to swap out the round shield as I am starting to outgrow it a little bit. Now that I have uh, superior heavy armor, I no longer need that round shield. So the cleaver is an interesting, it's a very interesting weapon. It can only be found through this encounter, uh, which was added with Iris. So it is five weapon damage. If the target has no armor, apply to bleed, which is nice. If the target does have armor, spawn a sharpened steel into your hand, which is a two, it's, it's this, it's a great card. It's a, a two, Stamina for weapon damage plus four bleed. It's quite a good. It's 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 quite a good uh, additional effect. Hmm. 
I'm going to go to the Armory Reserves. I'm not going to go after the Elite Combat this time, because I'm not in amazing shape. I am, however, going to look at the two weapons that are not the best. They're not terrible. It's uh, Rapid Bow is actually quite good. I like it a lot. What it, it, it is going to end up being uh, 20 damage, but its base weapon damage is still only 5. It's going to spawn two zero-cost weapon cards that deal a 5 by 2 Two of them, so it's it's ten and then ten, or rather five, 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 five. So it's not the best because I uh, I do have uh, I do have that that uh, um, that cleaver that's going to be spawning. Look how fucking badass shipwright looks. That's scary. That's just that's that's just scary. All right. So thankfully, by the way, that barricade does not seem to be uh, impacted by the Fragile and is spawning with its full 25 armor. Let's see what's happening here. We've got 8 and 8, 16 damage coming in on Shipwright. I'm not concerned about that. Um, <clears throat> because Shipwright now has the superior heavy armor, which is very likely going to be the armor that uh, he will wear for the rest of this game. That's 6, let's see. Uh, so what we're going to do is make sure that you die and also start stacking up bleeds on you. 12 bleed. That is fucking great. Because of the uh, additional 50%. Nice. Okay. So, let's also... 18. Wow. Good round one. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put focus fire on him, and then I am going to engage expert bow. So watch this. I mean, like, that would have been more impressive if the guy had more health. But just take it in mind. You know, take it as read. That was meant to be impressive. Law of Exchange is quite good. It's quite good, but I don't... I'm not banishing a whole lot of cards, but this is quite good at getting cards back into my hand, so I'm going to take it. I can't really afford the sparring partner. I'm not going to be able to afford the sparring partner and also a recruit in the next event, which is a shame. So I'll check out and see what the sage has to offer. You approach the ancient figure who looks older than the knotted wooden stick. Walk the... You approach the ancient figure who looks older than the knotted wooden walking stick he leans on. Some Florence for a wise fellow. He said, using the exact same, the exact same voice that I used for that fortune teller. Uh, so this is the big thing that we can do. We can reroll talents here. And what are my talents currently? What are my talents? I've got focus fire, which I'm okay with, and nefarious. That it's fine. I mean, the card draw is nice, and the five bleed is also nice. I could do better. I could also remove a card. See this, this. Would have been great if uh, it was in the, the the last run, where I could have just removed that fucking ruin that was spawning that. I'm still salty about this. Um, hmm. Nothing. I'm gonna save my money. And here we are at the final crossroads of the first street, heading into the first tavern, and it is Big Money No Whammies. Okay, let's see. Starting with a quarterstaff would be fucking phenomenal. Um, Shockwave... All right, so I love bears. I really actually do. I think that their their uh, racial ability is one of the more versatile in the game. They are phenomenal frontline fighters. Um, <clears throat> because of that, they can instantly convert a lot of, well, four different negative effects into just directly into armor, which makes them very, very useful. However, their talents are crazy expensive. So many of their talents just cost way too much. 25 damage to opponent, all are, all uh, strength on this character is applied as Shockwave, uh, which is it's just a delayed damage effect, and also to all opponents, and gain to Winded, which is not the worst, because Desalin would be able to uh, convert that directly into armor. Give me one second. I have to torture myself with more of this fucking ass. 
Uh, no. 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 Maybe. Maybe. Big maybe. Very maybe. Very, very, very maybe. I'm going to take her. This is Ilya Mossfoot. Welcome to the family. I'm taking her also specifically because I usually don't take uh, rabbits, but I'm trying to do something about that. I'm trying to take more rabbits. So let's... Spear is fine on her. Uh, heavy armor, regular heavy armor is fine on her as well. Uh, she has a couple things that I really like. Whenever this character gains armor, gain an additional five armor. That's going to go a long way towards overcoming the... Um, it's going to go a long way towards overcoming the, um, the, the, the decreased amount of armor generation that I have from this challenge. And Blood Frenzy is actually pretty good because I do, while I have not, I have apparently lied and I have not been leaning into ruins, I do still have those four ruins in my deck that can get the benefit from, from uh, that card. So yeah, why not? Please not spitter. All right. It's a trap. Oh, no. You're a waiting brother slain. Waiting brothers. Oh, my God. My waiting brothers are slain. I don't think I've ever noticed what's in the background of this. You fucker. Oh, we're going to murder you for this. Uh, You're a waiting brother slain. A few elite enders triumphantly brandish their weapons in the dim light. All the exits are covered. There's only one way out through them. Yeah, it's Sledge. Sledge ain't shit. All right, so... A lot of damage in on the also applies one Ooh, don't like that do not like that bleed because that's just going to keep on ticking down um okay so this one this billman needs to die because uh the bleed on shipwright will be converted directly into health i think that i can probably i can probably address if the if i cannot if i cannot uh kill this billman first, and Mossfoot does get a bleed that will never fall off of her. I can overcome that at least a little bit with the with the, the restoration in my deck. You know, the, uh, the invigorating blow. So there is that. Being said, I'm gonna do my damn best. I want you dead. Not enough. Maybe almost enough. Worth it. The reason why I did that somewhat wasteful thing of uh, spitting out two additional concealed blades that are just going to go straight into my deck, just to, you know, point it out again, one of the uh, mods that I'm dealing with, one of the challenge mods, is, is that all bleed that my party members receive will not tick down. And bleed is red damage. So it, it means that um, the longer the fight goes, just the worse shape I'm going to be by the end of it. So I wanted to make sure that I did not have a uh, just a, a constant, steady flow of outgoing health. Outgoing health? XP, what are you even saying? <laughs> All right, here we go. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to Law of Exchange, this digging deep, which costs three, because this costs three or more, by banishing this, I get to pull a card out of my deck, uh, out of my banish pile, directly back into my hand. Now, I should have had Mossfoot do that. I should have had Mossfoot do that, so that Shipwright could then turn around and put this on Sledge. So if I had been actually slick, that would have been slick. Unfortunately, I was not. Sledge is the same archetype that Obelisk at the very end of the game is based off of. He has a lot of displacement. Uh, so... First of all, let's just boot you out of here. Done. I'm done with dealing with you. So, let's see. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit three times. Oh, he has a retaliate on not aware of that. Okay, so hit three times so that Overwhelm is now up to four, and then I'm going to Invigorating Blow. 
which will get Gray up to uh, four restoration. The reason why Gray did not take any damage from the retaliation is because Gray is using a Gray is using a, a, a ranged weapon, which are immune to retaliation. Yep, there we go. I actually, like, I, 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 hmm. Well, I don't like that. But I am still ticking up while I am ticking down. Wish I paid closer attention. Okay, uh, I am going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to spin this out just a little bit longer. I want to get another stack of restoration on gray, if I can manage it. And I think that I should be able to. I should be able to. So I'm not actually going to take the actions that would kill this Billman. I'm going to deliberately spin this out a little bit longer so that I can try to get... And of course, naturally, it's going to be the one card that does not end up in my hand, and I'm just wasting time. Fuck it. Just go away. Um, none of these. And a reserves. Nope. Two medium, two bog standard medium armors. Wow. A bounty. Uh, we're going to be leveling up Mossfoot as she was the last person to join our party. Therefore, she is the farthest from level up and will receive the most amount of experience from there. Upgrading stamina, I don't, again, the uh, uh, the reason why I usually don't take hairs is because I they, they have, in my opinion, the worst racial ability. They put a trap on the, I'll, I'll show it to you, they put a trap on the, on the field that does 15 vitality damage, which is great in the first street and dog shit every street after. Uh, you know what? Why don't we just fucking go ahead and stop worrying about bleed, shall we? What a great, oh... Mossfoot. How good are you? Uh, so, um, Strange Mist is an excellent card to have. It costs one will, and it's on a rabbit, who I've literally just said I have no intention of ever using their will for their uh, for their, their racial ability. So, Mossfoot becomes my de facto healer. interesting anything interesting. so i've got 16 damage coming in on moss foot and nine on the barricade yep we're all set let's just go oops i didn't do that but didn't matter uh because i'm already working on you oh i should have started with this dumbass let's bring that spear back into my hand so what what uh what Law of Exchange is a very good card. It, it's one of the ones that you need to finish a uh, you need to finish a challenge in order to get to it. Uh, in order to get it, uh, it's. I did not really think too much of it because I, I uh, sometimes a lot of the times the cards that just do too much, the really complicated cards, often are not worth casting. But this one really is. This first, and remember, always pay attention to the order of operations. The first thing it does is banish a card. So if your hand is empty apart from Law of Exchange, it does not banish a card. It looks for a card to banish. It cannot find any, so it goes on to the next step. If the card that it, if the card is banished is 3 plus stamina, you can move a banished card back into your hand. Otherwise, and this includes not banishing a card at all, place a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile. So it is a it's it's three stamina either to it's three stamina to either to get a uh, a card I want into my hand or th three stamina to get a card I want into my hand. No matter how you slice it, it is a it's a very strong card. Right, one second, sixteen on the barricade. The barricade is going to go down unless. Okay. I need, I'm going to focus on taking out the footman because he is doing... All right, so this kind of bear, be careful of this specific kind of bear. Look for this armor on this bear and look for this attack. This attack is actually quite dangerous. Uh, it's 
without, I mean, it's it's one of the the it's one of the first things that you guys should be looking for when you first start playing this game is this attack on this bear. It deals six damage, and if the opponent has more than eighteen armor, it's also going to apply four bleed. Four bleed, because this bear can appear on street one. Four bleed in the early stages of the game can be catastrophic because your guys are not going to have that much health, and you are probably not going to have a lot of. A lot of uh, uh, countermeasures for just bleed. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Because I don't want to be... Uh, I don't want this to last six and a half hours again. I think this will be enough. Yeah, that'll not kill. And let's start working on you. No reason. Just because. We've decided not to like you. Okay, alright, so... These two will die from their bleed, and he will not burst through my barricade. That blood frenzy is not really doing a lot of good if I don't have more ruins in my deck. So now I think I'm going to start. I'm going to start looking for more ruins now that I actually have uh, specific measures to deal with them. Let's see. All right. I'm in a strong enough position that I am willing to spin this out a little bit. We're going to let Gray uh, get some of his health back. And we are going to take a step back and allow this to just cycle through. He's not really hes not really capable of hurting us. If this character has no neighbors in rank, deals zero instead. And uh, yeah, that, that strange brew is whatever the hell it's called, strange mist. We're going to allow this to go through one more, one more turn without uh, finishing this Axeman off, so that Gray can get just a little bit more health back. And there we go. Gray is now up to two. To two. Good lord. Forty-one out of forty-eight. Everyone else is in great shape. Shipwright is the only one that is really going to need some, uh, Shipwright is the only one that's really going to need some, uh, uh, some healing moving forward. I can do that. That's not a problem. None of these end. None of these. Okie dokie. So I'm going to do Courage and then the Docks. Wow, Shipwright's taking it again. All right. So that's uh, another permanent stamina for shipwright in exchange for another ten, uh, another ten vitality damage. I'm not super concerned about that because uh, what would mostly be killing him, what would be the most dangerous thing for him, would be if uh, it would be bleeds, and he's got unholy, which means he's functionally immune to bleeds. So pale stone and penitence. These two things, I wonder what they do when I don't have Iris with us. Both of these two things generally do Iris-specific actions. So we're going to try the Pale Stone first. This one should put Iris... This one will give Iris uh, 150 max health, but she needs to have a... Uh, she needs to have a spirit out. At the very least, it's going to be a combat, which is an opportunity for money and experience. The largest of the gang snatches the Pale Stone from another of the group, viciously hissing in their face as they try to reclaim it. He spends a moment turning it over in his hand, admir admir admiring. Admiring its pearly luster. Seeing you approach, he quickly stiffs the stone in the pocket. You lost, he barks. This ain't a safe place to be this time of night, friend. The rest of the gang begin to encircle you. Now, you didn't see nothing, did you? You won't back down to these thugs. Especially not with the voice I've given them. I don't think these are... Are these otters? They look like they might be like leopard seals, but they're probably otters. Eh, whatever. All right, moving on. So, these are the jerks. Who the first thing that they're going to do... First of all, let's get some health onto ship, right? And... Let's see. So he's going to be attacking the barricade. I'm all right with that. Uh, attacking Shipwright and attacking Mossfoot. 
So let's start with the one on top for no reason other than he happens to be on top. We have decided not to like you. And this... Good. All right, so... I can also have you take a brace so that you at least, at the very least, ignore the damage part of it, but uh, that... That uh, uh, net is still going to go over his head. Yep. So what that net does, again, is that uh, um, all damage, all outgoing damage, is checked against the net first. We need to burn through 30 damage before we can start dealing damage against these guys. However, any outgoing effects, such as, for example, the bleed from this... So the damage hits against the net, but the bleed did not. The bleed did not. It did not. Why didn't it? Normally this... Okay. Let's try this again. It must be because it's a gem. It's the only thing that makes sense. So what happened was that bleed, the bleed from this rush, should have landed on this uh, Salter's head, but it didn't. And I think it is because... Um, I think it's because it, it, the, the bleed is not a natural element of the card. It just... It's the same reason why the bleed won't appear on something with Juggernaut. Okay, talking to myself. So let's... What a prick. All right, so... All that damage is coming in on Mossfoot, but Mossfoot has a ton of armor. I'm not concerned. Uh, so let's make sure that that red powder gets back into our hand next round. Is honestly not necessary to... Well, yeah, probably it is. There's no reason not to very least get this fucking thing off of me. Uh, and also, let's put that injury directly onto Shipwright. Notice that it's 15 bleed instead of the usual 10 because the bleed is being uh, it, the bleed is being inflicted by it, by my party member, so it's 50% increased. Shipwright has unholy. That bleed will turn into health. That I should have paid closer attention to. Okay, then. Well, let's see. Alright, next level up, I'm going to give Shipwright an additional will so that we can have a potential backup barricade when the first one inevitably explodes. Hmm. All right, then. Screw it. Let's just finish this. Nope, and nope. The leader of the gang falls to the floor with a heavy thud. As he hits the wet cobbles, the stone tumbles out of his pocket, over the edge of the dock, and into the cold, still waters. Oh, so Iris isn't here, so we just lose the stone completely. You feel a chill... You feel a chill wind pick up. The sails of the nearby boat flutter and billow in its wake. Despite its sharp bite, it brings a resolute stillness within you. The party gains plus one will. Wow, dude. Fucking wow. Okay. Well, I'm satisfied with that result. Absolutely. fucking lootly All right, then. So let's see what the penitence does. Now... When Iris is here, we can stab this wolf in the back, and it will give us a choice between we can take nothing, or it'll give us a choice between two different curses, or ruins, rather, that uh, each of which actually have some really interesting effects. As you draw near, you hear the wolf singing to himself, as if in a trance, his voice trembling at the edge of his register, suspending upon... Suspended. Good lord. XV. Deep breath. Back straight. Uh, here we go. Try again. Suspended upon a silver chain, his outstretched arm dangles. Suspended upon a silver chain, his outstretched arm dangles an ivory wood charm over the surface of the lake. 
He notices you in his peripherals, breaking him out of his melancholic daze. He clutches the pendant tight to his chest. Stay back, he snaps, afraid. You needn't be witness to this. I've already suffered enough. The wolf bows his head in shame. I was there at Black Church, he says solemnly before a hollow laugh escapes through his nostrils. <laughs> I say that as if I was a mere bystander. He shakes his head. I don't like the voice I've given him. He turns his hand out from his chest, displaying the pendant resting on his palm. I took this that night. His eyes closed tightly, wincing. I drove a sword into her chest before I, struck, before I snatched it from her neck. Nothing's been the same since, he continues. I can still taste the ash in my lungs. It taints the food I eat, the breath I draw. It saps the color from the world. He turns his gaze to the horizon, staring pensively for a moment. Such is the price of our sin. Well, you know, I'm sorry that you're feeling bad about this and everything, but you fucking killed someone. I mean, we're not really in a place to judge. We also kill people. Uh, a lot. So, I'm not going to take this, I will not carry that burden for him. I will not take this chaos, because lose three vitality, that would turn into lose twelve vitality. So instead, we're going to leave this fucker alone to feel sorry for himself on the dock. So, the question was asked, how is this different? The question I posed, at least. How are those things different? Because they are generally Iris-specific events. When you are, uh, you can still run into some uh you can still run into some powder master specific events and some uh uh a couple not many uh, of the uh the moonstone the bard specific events but they tend to be the same whether you have that hero with you or not it is interesting and pretty cool that they put in a a different option if you don't have iris you can still do this and actually as it turns out still get a really fucking valuable thing i am very happy about getting an extra will that is perfect all straight down the line we're going to go to the army reserves and we are going to go after the elite combat you approach the reserves finding untidy stacks of weapon crates on the left and some chests of armor on the right as you begin to inspect them you hear the heavy footsteps of some guards returning from a patrol you'll only have time to look at one set before they return uh yes thank you that will do nicely falchion um <clears throat> Without question, Falchion, if you have anyone who is doing sword and board or dual wielding, you want a Falchion in your main hand. It is the highest weapon damage for a single-handed weapon that you will be able to find outside of a special encounter. There are there's at least one that I know of that is slightly higher, but it's it's gated behind a special encounter. Uh steadfast and steadfast. Look at you. And survivalist gear. Okay, so I'm going to keep these two steadfasts, and I'm going to swap the uh, light armor for this survivalist gear for now, at the very least for now. Uh, I don't need both of these steadfasts, but this this light armor, frankly, I mean, it's just a regular light. It's it's the only thing it's giving me is plus one stamina. Okay. So, who are we going to start with? Let's see what's incoming. Uh, this one is going to apply one bleed, so let's get him out of the picture completely and deal with him later. So it's nine damage on the barricade, nine damage on Mossfoot. All three of these guys are going to be doing bleeds, so I want to take care of them first for all of the reasons that I have already explained. really nothing worth getting back into my hand. We're all set. Let's just keep going. All right, so. Oh, perfect. They re, uh, it retargeted. So now I've got two hits. This is going to blow right through that barricade. So I do want to take care of that. Uh, this one, I'm reasonably certain I can kill. Maybe. Yes, there we go. 37 bleed. What I need now, there, I need an arterial, whatever the hell it's called. There's a uh, a talent that will do uh, four damage for each stack of bleed on a target, and we just have a shit ton of bleed. Let's see. 
Um, let's see something. I want to check something out. So I'm putting on a brace, and I'm going to use a ragged claw, and I'm wondering, will the brace, will the anticipation soak that brace? Yeah, it does. Okay, of course it does. Just checking, making sure. Four bleed and four bleed. Don't like it. Not a, this is this is okay. So four bleed on Mossfoot. I have not seen Mossfoot's strange mist though, so it will not be the end of the world if I cannot kill this guy before he puts that bleed on Mossfoot. Not quite. Not quite. Close, but not quite. So he is going to put that bleed on Mossfoot, but that's okay. Because, fingers crossed, there it is. There's my blade, there, my strange mist. There we go. Bleed go away. Good. That's what. That's basically what I'm going to be doing with Mossfoot instead of throwing out these fucking traps. Uh, all right. So this one will definitely die from his uh, from his bleed. Let's start work on this fucker right here. Gains. Okay. Again, if you see any, if you see any uh, icon that you don't recognize, if you see any attack icon that you don't recognize, you mouse the fuck over it and you read it. And if you're on, if you're on Switch, you know you can you can use the touch screen. You can touch the the you can touch the icon, and it'll give you the same thing. It'll let you know what's going on. This game will wreck your entire shit if you are caught unawares. The game, <clears throat> for the most part, telegraphs absolutely everything that it is about to do, which is why uh, chaotic elements such as ruins or uh, random shuffles, random position shuffling, are so scary. Because the game actually tells you literally everything that it is about to do. It is, it, it's one of my very favorite things uh, about it, is that it, it is extremely, extremely straightforward with its information. And that also means, by the way, that you should... Let's see. What are you doing? Anything interesting? No, just gaining some. You should always, always, always take make an make the effort to familiarize yourself with what is happening on your screen, with what what is incoming before you uh, uh, take actions. Are we already up? We are doing great in terms of fucking everything. All my guys are up at full health. So let's just work on this footman. And get that red powder back into my hand. Or it's it's it goes onto the top of my draw pile, and now with this turn, it will come into my hand. Is what I mean to say. What are you doing? Yeah, not a problem. So Nothing else I can do for right now. I need a lot more card draw. I need a lot more card draw. I'm doing very, very well on, obviously, I'm doing very well on damage. Almost entirely because of the sheer volume of bleeds I've got going on. However, I don't like that I very frequently have stamina left over on my guys after casting all of their cards, after after completely dumping out my hand. What you want, what 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 obviously what obviously is the goal is to have all of your guys with zero stamina and your hand completely empty. That's that's the dream. That's what you're really looking for. None of these. All right, so I don't need another will because I got one from the Pale Stone. And I'll take a not, thou shalt not pass. You shall not pass. Uh, hmm. 
Hmm. I don't really play just. Plagius can be very, very strong if we have been going uh, poisons, which we have not. Control is not a bad idea. Control is not a bad idea because it is, it's both displacement and also it forces my own guy to move. And the alternative is Acid Burn, which is not a terrible card. I mean, it's 10, I'll take it because it's 10 poison. It's 10 poison. It's ten poison if the if it specifically breaks their armor, which is not the best. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to revolutionaries, and then we're gonna do the hunter Fenra. You approach the group to discover they recognize you. Ah, so you're one of these Blackfoots we've been hearing all about. You notice them haul a heavy bag off the wall. Large metal spikes protrude out of it. Another one ships in. I say you're doing good work, friend. We don't want that damn prince nowhere near our city. He spits on the ground. The face of the first rebel lights up with surprise. Say, if I've completely forgotten what voice I was using for the first rebel. Say, if you could help us out with a weep. Oh, okay, wow. All right, we've got an accent. Hold on. <clears throat> Say, if you could help us out with a wee problem we've been having, we might be able to help you lot out. How's that sound? Okay, so. Let's see. I can fight two random contracts. So, um, here are my options. I can fight a hunter to gain protection, which is which is useless to me because I have a front line. Um, <clears throat> however, I will still be fighting a hunter. I will be getting a hunter weapon. It is a bit of a dice roll because they're not all created equally but one of them is caster and if i can get casters casters crossbow is fucking phenomenal it is 20 base damage the other option is i could do fight two random combats which is not bad i mean it's 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 a decent amount of experience and money but i'd gain contractor which is until you reach the warden gain an additional 50 florins every time i win a combat that is very good that is very good and will give me a lot of options, especially in the third street once my money has been building up. But it, it's just, it's an extra 50 florins every time I win a combat. Uh, and then the last one is the, I'm absolutely not doing it. It's one random combat and the opposite side, all the vacant positions filled with traps. I am very tempted to, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to take the hunter because I, yes, it is caster. Yes, it is caster. Um, okay. So caster is crazy dangerous. He is in my opinion, the most dangerous of the three of them because of all of his mechanics and because the fact, is it the three of them? Whatever, of the hunters, because he does damage directly to vitality. So we need to work quickly. And we can't work that quickly because <laughs> I don't have a lot of card draw. But I do have a shit ton of bleed. So. And I do have some heals. Well, an heal. I do have a heal. So let's see what we got. Um, there's no sense in... Actually, you know what? I am going to do this. Because he may, he may choose to target the barricade. Okay, so here's what's going on with this fight, just to, to point it out. These two barricades, these uh, icons in the barricades, this is Palisade, which means when the units, when the targets behind this unit are attacked, the damage is reduced by the stacks of whatever and dealt to this unit. So basically, what, what it means is, is that this will uh, act as, as, a, uh, as a, an impenetrable barrier for at least 15 damage. And also, it is entrenched. It cannot be moved. I do not have... Do not have... 15 damage in hand. Oh, I see. So it will, it'll reduce by the stacks of, ah, I see. Okay. So it will take 15 damage out of every attack and will apply it to the barricade. That's pretty interesting. Um, let's see. So I have a brace in hand, which means I can prepare for who I think Caster is going to shoot at next round. It would be worst if he shot at cart at shipwright because shipwright has already taken a hit. So let's let's hope he's moving out, and he is going to be shooting at Gray, you prick. But it's not going to matter because we have a staggering amount of bleed. Good lord, all of this bleed! Look at this bleed. 
Goodbye, caster. Go fuck yourself. I'll have... I'll have that crossbow now. Thank you. Ah, uh, none of these. Impressive you guys are, remarks one of the rebels studying the damage. Your back we've got. On us you can count. Excuse me. I know I'm not going to do it again. That's the take we're going to use. After a sincere farewell, the group scurry off into the night, lumbering their equipment behind them. There's Fenra. Okay, Fenra is actually kind of dangerous. Well, not kind of dangerous. Fenra is very dangerous because, well, we'll talk about it in a second. You confront the wolf who's clearly been hot on your heels for some time now. Relax, the less you fight back, the less pain there'll be. We don't want to wake anyone with those screams now, do we? She whips the tip of a rapier from her cloak to your neck with startling speed. Oh, who am I kidding? Where would the sport be in that? For you, this isn't sport. Okay, so Fenra is actually legitimately serious business. Or at least she can be. Okay, so she's going to be doing eight times three. Every single time I draw a skill, this damage is going to increase. So she's going to be doing eight by three to Mossfoot, who can handle it. She can handle it. Especially with... This is actually, it's its kind of a good thing I don't have very much card draw, frankly. I'm going to save the Strange Mist. It's not necessary for it right now. It's not necessary to use it right now. I'm going to wait until, I'm going to wait and see if she actually takes some damage. Yeah, there it is. And especially I wanted to see the, uh, the I, I want to deal with the bleed when it comes back up. If it comes back up. So that's going to be 10 by 3 directly into the barricade. Which is at the point where this is starting to get bad. That's bad. Because I, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work. I don't know if she's now. It's twelve by three. I don't know if she's going to blow through the barricade and then hit gray, or if the last strike will just be uh, absorbed into the ether. I'm not a hundred percent certain, and we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out whether I like it or not. Okay, so, as adjusted... No, I cannot afford the brace, but I can afford a kick. All right, so we have another round to think it over, and she is up to 16 by 3. Fenra is a DPS race. You need to kill her because every, just the simple act of drawing cards, just the, the beginning of every single round, she gets that much stronger. We are now at 18 times 3. So... I am reasonably certain... Well, I shouldn't put this on first, my bad. Oh, no, I can't afford it. Oh, you dumbass. Ah, uh, whatever. We're basically done with this anyway. I want to check something. Uh, 12 damage. If this breaks the target's uh, armor, apply 10 poison. If you don't have armor... Nope, it does nothing. Okay, well, that's a candidate for swapping out for a different thing. Later on. And we're good. She's going to die to her bleed before she can actually attack. None of these. Still none of these. Wretched Assault would have been great if I had actually done what I said I was going to do and leaned into uh, Ruins, which I, I I just... I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I said I was going to do it, and then I didn't. I, 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 don't, I don't have an excuse. It's... I'm sorry. Fenris Rapier I am going to keep because it is actually quite strong, but I don't need it just yet. I'm happy with the weapons that everybody has right now. The falchion in the main hand is going to be stronger than Fenris Rapier. And also, I I don't necessarily want to swap out the cleaver for the rapier just yet, because the cleaver is going to be a good source of pulling sharpened steels into my hand, which now is going to be worth 20 fucking damage. Is that everything? That's everything, yes, of course. Oh no, we done been ambushed. Oh shit, it's a dangerous thug. These thugs is dangerous, yo. Alright, so... Let's see. 
damage is being split very evenly. Only problem with Caster's Crossbow is that it is, in fact, very expensive. So by casting this, it does mean that I'm not going to be doing... Uh, I'm not going to be uh, uh, throwing a, a full brace out. It also, the, the, the crossbow itself does some pretty interesting things. Um, it banishes itself on use, and it uh, throws a reload into your draw pile. That reload is a talent, so it does interact with passives that... Uh, inter that combo off of or, or synergize with talents and it moves basically it pulls the crossbow out of banish and puts it onto the top of your draw pile so once that comes up you won't have it immediately but the next time you draw cards for any reason so let's just move on Alright, so, I know for a fact that this will break your armor, so that's going to give you 10 poison. Um, sure. Hmm. That's interesting. What if I were... Oh, no, I don't have anything. Ugh, oh, for fuck's sake. Ugh, oh, how dumb. At least let's get the, the reload straight back on top. I I was trying to be slick. I was trying to do something. Uh, I, was trying to, I was trying to be slick. So what I was trying to do there was uh, bring the crossbow out of the banish pile directly back into my hand. But after I triggered it, I suddenly realized, oh, wait, I don't have any cards in hand that cost three stamina, so that won't work. So instead... Instead... At the very least, uh, it, it did allow me to get my... Uh, uh, so the, the, the crossbow is the next thing I'm going to draw. And there's nothing else I can do here. Except I can... Load you up with a little bit of... Okay. This guy will die at the start of his next turn. I can safely ignore him completely. You... Let's have you with... Uh, yeah. Okay, almost at full health again. This also, by the way, I want to point out that Caster's Crossbow is dealing 20 damage directly to Vitality. Directly to Vitality. Bleed also does damage directly to Vitality. That's why I did that. He's going to die. We don't need to pay attention to him. And he's going to die. We don't really need to pay attention to him either. But there's honestly nothing else that we need to do. We don't need to draw this out any further in order to uh, uh, allow someone to heal. Everyone is in great shape. Everyone is in very good shape. I'm not going to take a second invigorating blow. Hmm. My choice here is between a second invigorating blow and a reserves. Reserves is one of those cards that there's there's no end to how many of them are useful. My only issue with it is that I only have one person in the back rank, so it's it's not really drawing a large amount of cards for me yet. But it uh, I can change that anytime. I can move more people into the back row if I need to. Uh, let's see. Impulsive. I will not be taking this because this character isn't doing a lot of moving. Bloodthirsty, on the other hand, whenever this character kills an enemy with an attack, their maximum vitality is increased by three. So, let's maybe change some things around, shall we? We're going to increase your stamina. And now that you are directly incentivized to be my big killer, let's have you carrying that crossbow. And Gray can make do with the spear, at least for now, and eventually I'll swap that out for the rapier as soon as I get another decent one-handed weapon. Oh, hello, the exotic merchant. I'm going to ignore the relic knight. I'm going to take the exotic merchant, and then I'm going to go on to the talisman, because the talisman is potentially a... Uh, the, the talisman is a... Uh, it's a, a, an upgrade. You get the impression the merchant smiles at you as you approach, though their face remains cloaked in shadow. 
Greetings, stranger. They whisper in a raspy tone. Oh, raspy, okay. For a fair price, my wares can be yours today, changing one's essence or one's tools. Uh, so let's take a look at our, that is murder on my throat. Uh, you shall not pass is a, that's, that would be a decent candidate for this. So would actually acid burn is the only real option or blood frenzy. Potentially blood frenzy though, banishes itself and it, it, it's a zero cost card. So I am going to go ahead and say, excellent. They, they draw the excellent. They gesture towards one side of the stool's wares. Please take your pick. For a price, of course. Now, I'm not going to take Serenity. Rivalry is the one that I usually take. Copycat is also pretty interesting. Especially because my weasel is in the dead centers in the middle row. But I am going to take Rivalry. Because it's a very good card. I don't particularly care for Acid Burn. I don't have a lot of other things that are leaning into Poison. So I, I'm not... I'm not concerned about about losing it. It is not a bad card, however, especially if you are uh, leaning into poisons, uh, because it, it is a good way of getting a lot of it on. However, it's conditional. You need to actually break armor in order to uh, get the benefit from it. So if once you've already blown through someone's armor, or if they have a shit ton of armor, it's only 12 damage for two stamina, which really is not great. A pleasure doing business, stranger. The merchant hisses as you walk away. Ooh. Well, you know what? I don't care about taking five party damage. That's not going to be a big deal. I am, however, going to take this talisman. The stall features an old, a dusty old green tablecloth on which a few dozen items sit, each no bigger than a mouse paw. Your gaze drifts to the wood group. Your gaze drifts to the group of wooden trinkets, and then to one in particular, a crow's foot brooch. Hey, friend, that's what you think it is, the old hare whispers. Genuine horn beam, ironwood, black iron, black church iron. After a brief pause, he continues. It ain't right what happened there to your people. He points to the brooch. Friend of mine gave me that off a lifetime ago now. Oh my god, I, I'm so sorry if you happen to have or know anyone who has that accent. It just completely fell apart on me. Let me try that again. Oh, it ain't right what happened there to your people. He points to the brooch. Friend of mine gave me that off a lifetime ago now. He met his end, same as the tree that bore this, I expect, in flames. After a longer, more pensive pause, after a longer, pensive pause, take it. Should be with its own. Never did know how to wear it proper anyways. And we're not even going to take it, because the, the brooch is, as I've discussed before, it's not terrible, but it's, I mean, the Dexter or the Sinister, neither of them are very exciting. But this, however, for 150 bucks, we can absolutely grab a uh, an upgrade token, which is a good... It's potentially, potentially all good. Also, the hare seems surprised, but gladly takes your coin. Uh, also a fine choice. He bids you farewell. Hello. My goodness. You lovely, lovely thing. Uh, negative one stamina cost. Wow, we have some options for this. There's a lot. There's a lot that could do with being free. I'm going to, for right now, I'm going to put it onto the red powder to make sure that there is no way I am unable. Oh, that went away then. Okay. It's okay. Voices in the Dark was just a, it's a special encounter that, uh, honestly, it's not super exciting. Uh, I'm going to be taking this Kilderkin. The game is very clearly now apologizing to me for the, the fortune teller of which we will not speak again. Uh, we've already, we've, I've already read this one. I don't need to do it again. Uh, we are going to be taking another red powder. absolutely. fucking -lutely. And uh, combat. Okay. Don't think it's super necessary for me to explain literally everything I'm doing. I'm sure I've done plenty of that. But it's difficult for me to stop. <laughs> I am who I am. Uh... I'm going to be cheeky. I'm going to get rid of my spear just to make sure that I definitely have uh, a red powder in my hand next round. 
So I'm doing great on damage. I've got two red powders. I've got uh, uh, a ton of bleed. What I need now is I need card draw. I do not know if this is going to be enough for us to be able to actually take on the prince. That's still going to be... Uh, uh, that, is, that is, honest to God, still a very big question mark. I need a lot more card draw, essentially. However, as far as at the very least this street is concerned, we're doing we're doing just fine. I am being a bit wasteful, allowing one of my concealed blades to uh, discard instead of uh, using it this time. I know. I, I just you know. I, I'm stuck. I'm, I I uh, I want to see. I, I want to try to speed up a little bit. The last recording being six and a half hours was absolutely not intentional, and I uh, I do have other things that I, I like to do in the daytime. There we go. And I have like chores and errands I need to run can't I, I'm, I'm an old man i cannot sit around and, and just play video games all day it's 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 maybe when i was younger but i'm an old man now and your aunt and i we we've we've uh oh that's right you know if i'm your if i'm your weird uncle that means my wife is your aunt and you are fucking lucky because she's awesome you have a really cool aunt dude like good on you well done all right, so these knife throwers are a pain in the dick. Every time they take a hit, this knife thing will, this knife counter will tick up by one. And uh, anytime anyone uses a weapon card, that will trigger. So let's get rivalry out now. Why not? I mean, I have it. Uh, there's no need to throw the strange mist just yet. I'm gonna start on the knife thrower and uh, put this on the other knife thrower so we can start on her immediately afterwards. Okay. Two. Not quite enough. This'll do it. All right. So again, remember, if you have an option, if you have a, like, if you have the, if the choice is between spreading your damage around and um, and guaranteeing a kill, objectively, the correct answer is almost always going to be guarantee the kill. I say almost always because I assume there's probably going to be some circumstances. It's it's possible there may be some circumstances where it uh, it might be a better idea to spread a little damage around. But uh, unless I see it happen, unless I see it happen, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say no. Probably this is the best thing you could possibly do. Give me a minute. I'm sorry. Just rambling. I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to pay attention. That's just my entire life in a nutshell. I'm trying to pay attention. <laughs> Ooh! Yes, that's right. I forgot. The weapon cards. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to throw another... He's only got one stack of knives, so it's only going to do five damage. And it is going to guarantee a kill. And this is going to guarantee this kill. Akimbo, I will take. Thank you very much. And now that I have Akimbo... Let's get rid of the spear. So let's see. Neither of these are really spectacularly good. What I want is I want the ability to have the three strikes with Akimbo, and because Gray has rivalry, I will be able to get some real benefit out of that. So I just need something in the offhand. Neither of these are great. Squ Exquisite Sword is fine. Exquisite Sword is fine. And now my uh, uh, my Weasel has several multi-strike attacks. Uh, uh, he is going... He? She? Tristan Shipwright. Ooh. Almost level five. Uh, Maylor Gray. So, 
and uh, Ilya Mossfoot. So uh, I forgot what I was talking about. Doesn't matter. Moving on. Let's offload. There's a few things I could absolutely get rid of. We're going to get rid of uh, withdraw. <sighs> nothing special, nothing interesting. None of these. Okay. So the prisoners is the informant task. It is what I absolutely need to take. And it's got a, a counter of two. I can take the drunken guards or the merchant in trouble. Drunken guards is 300 bucks. Merchant in trouble is 250 bucks with a chance of a combat. But there might be something better. I don't mind giving up either of these. Because I'm, I'm doing pretty well otherwise. I'm going to take the prisoners now. Allow those two cards to cycle through and we'll see what's underneath. You burst into the prison to find several heavy cell doors flanking the far wall. As you approach, you notice a crude pair of crow's foot. Crow's foots carved into the center two doors, your targets. As you lower yourself to the heavy iron padlock, you hear the clamoring of guards echo down a nearby hallway. You suspect even more are on their way as they call for help. All right, we're going to pick the lock on the first door. So it's, it's, I don't, I mean, like we are actively picking the lock, even though what we're practically doing is just murdering some guys. 24 damage coming in on the fake barricade. I'm calling it fake because it is from the, uh, it's it's directly from the uh, the encounter we did before. This is not one of the barricades that Shipwright puts out, which is why it has 15 armor instead of 25. Just pay attention to that. And it's going to get blown away, and I'm alright with that. It doesn't need to last forever. It is so nice having, and he's just going to die from his dot, so I don't need to work on him anymore. It is it is very nice to be able to just pop out a card that does 20 damage on demand. I'm going to keep this this uh, uh, cleaver. I'm keeping this cleaver for at least a little while. Uh, so what are you going to be doing? Twenty damage coming in on gray. I should have paid attention. I was trying to show off again. I wanted to see. Uh, I wanted to get this uh, overwhelm up. Oh, that's right. It's not going to be twenty damage coming in. And the reason why I allowed myself to not pay attention was because he uh, uh, he he had more bleed than life. So fuck him. And that guy too. What do I have here? I could probably pop out another rivalry. Mossfoot does not have enough to uh, Mossfoot does not have enough uh, uh, to to deal with the, to do another cross. Uh, excuse me, caster's crossbow. I could. No, nope, let's do it the other way around. There we go. See, who needs some health? You could use a little bit of health. A little bit of bleed. Punch you in the head. We're all set. There's no need to spin this out. We're all set. None of these. Alright, so... Fuck yes. absolutely fucking lootly Steadfast is extraordinary. I'm going to take that. Steadfast is is uh, one of those passives that is almost always a, uh, a net positive. It allows you to... Uh, it's just... It's it's very straightforward. It's just eight armor per round, which means uh, you can kind of... Like, I can potentially move him down from a superior heavy to a regular heavy because of the amount of uh, armor he's taking on per round. So, this may be make or break because... Uh, weasels, weasel damage ramp depends more on passives than on uh, than on their talents. 
Big, big money, no whammies. Fingers crossed. And whammies. None of these are any good. I don't like any of these. This is whenever these... Whenever this character ruins a card spawn or rend to your hand, but I lied about leaning into ruins, so I have not been doing a lot of that. And also, rend is not that... It's not that good of a card, frankly. This is... It's just... It, it, it's, it is basically a strike plus. It's five damage and two vulnerable, which is nice, and one bleed, which is why... Why, why bother? Why, why bother with just one bleed? I'll stick with Agile. Because that means just in case, if when he gets moved around by someone else, that will also be ten. Well, uh, ten minus twenty-five percent uh, of his uh, ten minus twenty-five percent uh, uh, armor. I'm going to take the extra stamina. I'm doing fine on will for him. Swiftly after the last body hits the ground, you haul the door open. The informant's wife timidly clambers out. You guide her into the corners. You hear a second group of foots footsteps hurrying down the corridor. Open the second cell. More guards are hot on your heels. We are actively lockpicking, even though we are also actively fighting. Dunno. Whatever. So... Let's see. Okay. I think this crossbowman is going to end up being the most dangerous because he can hit my back row. So... Let's just fuck him up. Okay. I'm gonna hold off on throwing out. I'm gonna hold off on throwing out my uh, the the replacement barricade, and I'll tell you exactly why. These two guys are. Oh, he is trying to. I see. He's trying to swing at my back rank. So let's just kill him. So uh, what 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 I expected was was that both of these would be a swing through the front, and it would just because it it would not be. Uh, an attack uh, trying to get at Gray. There's no point in putting a barricade in front of him. It's just going to be destroying the barricade. Uh, let's see what I can do about this. So first of all, I can... Ignore the damage completely. Why don't I? And then fill him up with a shit pile of bleed. And then a little bit more bleed. A little bit of armor for the front. And we're all done. He'll die from his bleed, and he won't do anything useful. Hmm. I wonder if I should swap some things around. As soon as I get... So the problem is, is that uh, uh, Fenris Rapier will always count as a six damage, six weapon damage card, even though the damage of the card actually increases. Uh, as uh, every time you draw it. So it's still only a six weapon damage card. I might want to, well, not might want to. I definitely want to move it into my back, uh, into my, uh, I definitely want to move it into my, uh, my, my offhand. Good Lord. Anybody need anything? Nope. Okay, you know what? Let's just make sure that he dies. Fuck it. No sense in taking anything. Any, no, no, no sense in dragging this out any longer than it has to be. Except for the fact that uh, uh, my rabbit has bloodthirsty and... It's, it's, okay, then. I don't need tensions. I, I legitimately do not need tensions. I'm fine on zero-cost cards and um, marked is not... I have, I have red powder. I don't need the... Uh, one stack of situ the situationally one stack of, of overwhelm that uh, that card can offer me. You burst through the second door and a young wolf rushes out and over to their mother. You explain to the informant's wife the plan of their escape and where they must hurry in secret to meet with her husband. Urgently hurrying the two down a narrow alley, you bid them farewell as you scurry back to the bustling street. Okay. I'll take that smugglers. I'll take that smugglers. I'm going to do a combat and then the smugglers. Okay, so 
24 damage on the barricade, which will just blow through it. Actually, you know, I can give a little bit more. A little bit more armor to it, but it'll still blow through it. Uh, and yes, nothing special, nothing major. We're all set. No one needs any health. We're all set. So let's banish the kick and get the red powder back. Just make sure that we have it next round. I'm just going to use it. I want it out of my hand. I, I, I'm just allowing it to banish. If I ever have another opportunity to reroll, I'll, I'll reroll that. Because frankly, the um, the ragged claws are even with the four damage I'm taking. They're a lot more. They're a lot more valuable than the rends. Rend is just not a very exciting card. Wait, I literally just looked at that. Okay, so we're all set. Anything better? Nope. Okay, we're going to take the smugglers. This is especially good because we are very, very close to the next street, so we'll we'll see them soon. You look like you know how to get around unnoticed, he says as you walk by, looking to make some coin. You move close. I mean, you clearly noticed me. You, you move closer, noting a strong, dusty aroma. We've got to deliver some powder, but it ain't exactly legal, so it needs to be quiet, like... There's too much going on tonight for us to take the wagon. What say you take it deeper into the city? Some of my men will meet you further along, pay you well on delivery. Yep, absolutely. We're going to take these three black powders in hand. They can either be converted into money uh, in the, uh, when we meet this dude's uh, confederates, or uh, we can simply keep them and have a combat, which we're not going to do, or we can recruit somebody. Doors slam shut as you step down the street, which recedes into total darkness and silence. All of a sudden, you hear a familiar whistling hurtling towards your party. You and your companions disperse in the streets, narrowly avoiding a barrage of missiles that surely would have ended your mission. They have the clear advantage on you. No, they don't. There's only two, there's only two choices available to you here. Turn back and get caught in the open, or press onwards and take the fight to them. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to press onwards. We're, we're, we're gonna take the fight. That's a lot of guy. Holy shit. Holy shit, look how much guy. Hmm. Nope, I think we should be fine. So let's cycle out them, their red powders. I'm going to start on these ender clippers because fuck them. I need so much more card draw. Holy shit, man. I apologize. I know it's really irritating to hear me bitch about needing card draw literally fucking every other second. Uh, I'll try to, I'll try to change the record. Biggest positive is that I do have the means to address the stupid amount of poison these pricks are about to throw around. So, uh, one on the barricade, one on shipwright. We're, we're fine. Five, almost. That'll do. Okay, good. Hmm. I want that red powder back into my hand, and I am willing to get rid of this guard for it. Kick is useless, and I can't cast the rapier. So. Okay. 
I'm going to continue working on the back because I want that clipper. I, I, I'm done with this fucking clipper. Now. <clears throat> cool. Yes, I will. Okay, so uh, the reason why I'm hesitating is because Grey is no longer carrying a ranged weapon. Grey will now be uh, taking retaliation damage as well as stacks of poison. Every time I hit this guy, it will be hurting me. But I do have restoration and I do have bolster. So it's fine. And you'll die from that. And I do have I, I do have the ability to uh, pull quite a lot of to to, to uh, clear quite a bit of that uh, that poison off. I can do it. I can try that again. I can clear poisons at least twice because I have two will on Mossfoot. So I'm not too concerned. I'm not too concerned. This one will die for the from the bleed. This one will just fucking kill right now, shall we? So, the strange mist, who needs it most? Honestly, neither of them. Both of them are going to be taking on armor, more than enough armor to deal with those poison gates, at least for now. Remember that poison ticks upward. So I'll take care of shipwrights first, because it is much higher. And it does tick upward, so it's just going to get worse. And that's actually, yeah, that's what I thought. Mm. It's honestly not too bad because Bolster, the uh, his 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 armor survivalist gear, is good for a. It's decent for a backliner. It's not the best because of how slow it is to put armor on your guys, but because it has both armor and restoration, it's very good for. Um, for example, if one of your guys has been beaten to shit on your front row, you can move him into the back row, put this onto him, and a, a couple of, you know, a, a combat or so later, he should be uh, good as new, theoretically. Uh, let's start with the Axeman. Caster's crossbow is so it's it's an incredibly fucking useful weapon card to have it, to to the point where I would I would recommend like if you know that it is Caster he, he should be a very high priority um, among other things is that because it's it's just the weapon damage is so high sharpened steel is now uh, it's just a crazy powerful card uh, I do not need a second akimbo and I don't really need a superior medium armor either. Terrible fight. Not really, but you miraculously pull through. Surely, Tenfear is watching over you. I, honestly, probably this time around, that is that is a fairly accurate statement. Two Kilderkin. Two Kilderkin. But I need a lot more preparation. Oh, I already promised. I, I promised I was not going to sit here and bitch about how little card draw I have. I am a. I just can't stop lying. I cannot stop lying. That's all I do, is 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 I I don't take ruin and lie. did not really leave myself with anything to... Mm. Mm. At least let's get something taken. Out. 
Remember also, Mossfoot has uh, Mossfoot has bloodthirsty. Every time Mossfoot makes a kill, his uh, her sorry uh, Mossfoot's max health is already up to ninety four, which is phenomenal. Mossfoot is is permanently in my front line. No matter what else happens, Mossfoot is front line. And frankly, has uh, been performing. Honestly, I can't even say better than expected. She has been performing exactly as I have uh, expected, uh, exactly as I have uh, recognized. Uh, every time I do take along a rabbit, that rabbit ends up basically carrying my team. The only thing she's missing is Ardent. There we are. So we're going to put a focus fire on him first, and then hit him three times. Six charge and he just goes away bye bye uh refresh fucking finally nope no back alley that is ridiculous all right so fingers crossed let's let's see who is up all right so no mice ibis hesselthwaite not bad, but not great. Not bad, but not great. Concentration is, uh, it, it's it's decent card draw, but it also does leave your dude pacified. And crossbow, it's very good weapon damage, but it leaves your dude pacified. So, sorry, Ibis, it's a no. Uh, Lara Hesselthwaite. Oh, shit. Uh, you don't look like sisters. I... I I apologize. You, you uh, uh, I was not expecting you to be... This is like a twins situation here. All right, so Lara Hesselthwaite. Um, vigor, uh, the inspiration is is not... It's not... It's not the... It's not terrible because it is at least one shot of vigor, but that's really all it is, is one shot of vigor. The weapons aren't amazing. Cool under pressure is a bit of a liability. Sleight of hand is interesting. And then there's this. One extra card draw, ruin two cards in hand, gain four bleed, and also, ooh, you know what? Yeah, I'll take this. I'll take you, Taryn. I'll take you. Because it actually is, I, I finally do have something that will, in fact, ruin two cards in hand, so I can, I can uh, actually not have been lying this whole time about not uh, leaning in. I do have a, I do have... Something that uh, uh, every time I ruin a card, they gain five. Uh, they gain five combat, and also I have this: if active character has uh, has combat, whatever the fuck, uh, strength, whatever the fuck, if active character has strength, allies on the rank gain five strength. I will take it. I will take you, Islington. You're with me. You will be wearing the steadfast armor, and unfortunately, your weapons are dog shit ass. It's not the end of the world. It's not the worst I've seen. But we will be taking you. So, second street boss. Blister. Blister ain't shit. Okay, so. I thought I changed your position. I could have sworn I changed your position. Yikes. That's okay, it's not... We'll, we'll still deal. We'll still deal. And also, Islington is... Uh, you know, Steadfast is a good armor for him. You shall not pass banishes itself. Remember this dude in the back, he will banish the first card I play every round. This guy will not take damage if it is less than five. However, will take bleed. Sprinkle the back row. Are you done? I think you're about done. Yeah. Okay. I want this fucker gone. So that's my next. This is useless. Okay. Hey, buddy. Come on up. Hey, buddy. This is banishes itself, so take care of the demoralize. Uh, and also, 
It's always nice to have overwhelm on somebody. All right, let's see. Yes, buddy. What is it, honey? All right, so let's ruin two cards in hand. Remember, these are not going to be permanent ruins. They are just going to be uh, temporary. And move, swap two opponents to their adjacent position on the other rank. Huh, what? Oh, it's... Oh, oh adjacent position of the other rank. It's actually also... I've no, literally never used this card before. So it's if I, I tried to hit him and Blister, Blister could not move. It's... Holy shit. That's actually a much better card than I thought it was going to be. Move, swap two opponents to their adjacent position on the other rank. So it actually is... It's displacement. It is pull them forward or push them back. Okay, that's a good card. I will use that more. Uh, you, however, are bleeding. I don't like that. And I'd like you to stop. So that restoration is going to help a little bit. Uh, let's give you some anticipation because I'm not sad. I'm not thrilled about the damage coming in on you, especially because I I wanted you to be I, I wanted Islington to be in the back rank. I made a mistake by uh, not ensuring that they were in the back rank. Hello, Nemo. Good boy, Nemo. Yes, good boy. All right, so. May as well. No reason not to. Okay. So. So fucking good. All right. Uh, and actually, let's see. I should be able to just finish them off. Good. All right. Is there anything else I can do this round? Nope, nothing. Okay. Oh, a lot of bleed coming. Ooh, that's a lot of bleed. And it is not ticking down. Where the hell's my strange mist? Still not fucking here. God damn ya. Alright, let's see if we can finish this quickly then. And not take another 10 damage if I can avoid it. Alright. That'll do. Nope and nope. All right, Moss Foot, level six, and hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. I don't really like any of these. Um, so Ruthless would be very good if this was a character that had a lot of, that had really any means of, of gaining strength. I mean, like, it's it's Ruins, and I, I, I am pretending that I'm leaning into Ruins. Sadist Cunning is not bad. Ruin a card, draw a card for each status effect on target opponent. I'll try that, because it's not, it's not expensive. And um, it's not expensive. That's really it. It's not expensive. All right, uh, so five, six... Nearly six, nearly six. So obviously we are going to be going with you. All right, Islington. And, uh, hmm. I already have a joint strike. Will not be taking barbed trap. Thank you. Barbed trap. Thank you very much. Throwing daggers would be amazing if I had a reliable amount of preparation. Do I have any preparation in my deck? I have one calculating strike. And that is it for preparation. My deck has become very, very unwieldy. I'd like to get rid of all these guards if I can. 43 is not the end of the world. I'm not going to be taking... I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I will be taking nothing. I'll just, I'm just... I am just going to forfeit. I 
I cannot fucking believe I forgot to do it again. I was going to move Islington at the back. I didn't. Good, that's one dead. And I have enough for a second brace. Not a bad turn one. Uh, this first one is going to hit, and he's only going to do armor damage. The second one is going to die, and then this third one should drop to zero damage because their this first attack does nothing. It, it, it is zero damage if they don't have someone next to them. It's a uh, It's like a phalanx attack. So let's see if that's how this works. Oh! Yet yeah, neither of them do anything, apparently, because he died before anything happened, and I'm not paying enough attention to nothing. Alright, so, uh, hang on. Let's get my red powder back in my hand. You're gonna die to your bleed. All right, careful, careful. These fuckers, by the way, these these fuckers kill mice. That's all I'm gonna say. Actually, coming pretty close to killing my uh, my my weasel. Also, these fuckers kill mice. And the only reason why it comes that close to killing my weasel is because I, I'm I'm insisting on continuing to hit as it is doing increasing amounts of damage. Uh, Mossfoot with the. Uh, Mossfoot with the... Oh, God. Um, Uh-oh. Not like that. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, I'm not going to do... Ooh, boy. I don't really have any additional damage in my hand. Well. I'm going to spin this out... Just a little bit. I don't like that Gray is under half health. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna boot this back. We're going to allow Gray to tick up at least one more. Just one more. Just one more. Four more health will bring him up to six more health. Okay. Hmm. Nope. Not going to keep on doing it. Not going to keep on doing it. Just going to allow this to end. Just one moment. There we are. No. Well, shit. Called by the Cold is a special encounter that I don't remember. I don't remember what the uh, what the reward is. I think it is a dagger of some kind. No, it is not. I think that it's it's. Hmm. Courage is a is a, a a maximum a free max stamina, which would be phenomenal. Mentor right now would be another red powder. I've already got two, and I'm not too worried about it. I am going to go on to calling, uh, uh, Called by the Cold, because it is, if nothing else, experience. You creep delicately into the center of the court, placing each foot with caution and purpose. You halt as you reach the court's center. A low, chilling wind whispers over the stone floor, stealing away the sound of the city in its wake. Unsettled, you turn to leave, but find your entrance to this space replaced by another stone wall, the same stone that now flanks you on all sides. A slow panic begins to consume you. An unearthly sound how an unearthly sound howls out from the silence. Ribbons of twisting shadow emerge from each of the stone walls, curling with the wind until their dreadful tendrils coalesce into three black haunting specters bearing the faces of your past, of your brothers. As the cloaked revenants approach, the stone walls begin to close inwards, confining you to the hard visions of your We are going to fight these boys. It's these fuckers. I cannot believe I forgot to move this LinkedIn in the back again. Jesus fucking Christ. What is what is the matter? Why do I do this? Ooh, boy, that is a lot of damage coming in on gray. 
You can ignore one of them. 15 damage coming in on Gray. Shit. Okay. You can mitigate it a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, let's bring the Akimbo back into hand. It back into hand. Bonus foot can fuck someone up with that next round. I am pretty sure that the way this, this works is that if it says if this character dies from damage that wasn't dealt by an attack, it does not seem this does not seem to trigger off of bleeds or poisons. Or spirits, for that matter. It seems as though, because every time these guys attack, they also deal damage to themselves. It seems as if, if that is what kills them, uh, this triggers. I honestly have legitimately no idea. It is very, very hard to say. Let's see. Well, first of all, you know what? Fuck the dumb shit, let's just make sure that these guys die. Okay, he will die. Hmm. God damn it. Well, whatever. Who are you hitting? Not worth it. Oh, I miscounted. Uh oh. Did that put it into my deck? No, it doesn't seem to. Does that just does that just not work? Did did they decide that this was a shitty thing to do when drawn party takes three damage, and that would be times four? So I don't know. It actually did. I'm pretty sure it killed itself, and I it do, does not seem to have spawned into my deck. So if this is something that is an oversight on the part of Montevero, that it should be doing this and it simply isn't. I'll be very, very happy. I I'm okay with I'm okay with that kind of I'm okay with that kind of bug, the kind that benefits me. It does seem to be the case. Honestly, don't need any of these. I'm gonna check. No. No, I don't see it. Okay, so I don't know what the fuck triggers that particular uh, that that particular thing. It does not seem to trigger. It does seem to be bugged or busted in some way. That uh, for some reason, when the uh, when the the there's something in the way of its resolution that is preventing it from actually throwing that particularly shitty ruin into my deck. And I am okay with that. Uh, salvation. Find deliverance in the quiet. Gain salvation. This is one of the best cards in the game because of... It just It's just three free. It's three free vitality for the whole party. That's it. When played, draw a card. So, and it costs zero. So... Um, it's just It's just a pulse of health for everybody in the party. I don't want these extra chains, even though I should probably be taking these extra chains. The reason why I'm thinking I might need to take these extra chains is because I am not filling up my entire hand with cards every single round, and that's a problem. It's a problem for me. You know, it's just occurred to me that the quick round that this is this is a this is the bear. I don't this could either be a wolf or a rabbit, and this is definitely a mouse. Look at that! He's holding the thing, he's holding the, the mug with both hands. That's so fucking cute. Oh I know that's a little diminutive, and I know that every every mouse I have encountered would probably just fucking wreck my entire shit, but that is really, really cute. I'm gonna take the chains. Because I don't have a lot of card draw, and I don't want that encounter to last very long. So let's see. Nearly five, nearly five. Just turned six, and almost six. Let's go with Mossfoot. We're going to go with Mossfoot. 
Actually, no, not Mossfoot. We are going to go with uh, uh, we're going to go with Esslington because Esslington is very slightly behind Mossfoot in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, excuse me experience. And this will be um, this will be Mossfoot's third passive, which is important. And uh, mm, mm, okay, bloodthirsty. Uh, I'll, I'll take another bloodthirsty. That's that's fine. And now that I am remembering it, I am going to go ahead and move you into the back. You should have been this whole time. I'd like to take those knife throwers. It's going to be a pain in the dick for me to remember not to use weapon cards. I need to remember not to use weapon cards. I must not use weapon cards. Okay? Everybody with me? Everybody hear me? I need to not be using weapon cards. It's a weapon card. What a lousy first round. I am using a weapon card to kill will not kill. It will not kill. It will not kill. I should not do that. It will be bad. Ending my turn. Okay. Must not use weapon card. As a matter of fact, let's remove the temptation. Good. That'll do just fine. Okay, that's much better. It's amazing the kinds of the kinds of problems that uh, two red powders in a single round can resolve. Hey, buddy, come on. You cannot possibly be hungry. I know I just fed you. You are not. You are not going to pull a fast one on me, buddy. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to ruin these two. I'm going to choose these two. And it does! Wow! That is a really good card. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Um, hmm. That being... What the fuck, you moron! Lit no weapon cards! No weapon cards! It's all right. Didn't really do too much, especially because Mossfoot has a stupid amount of health, but still. Ugh. All right. Let's repair some of that now, shall we? Remember, no weapon cards. Yes, buddy, I know. Unfortunately, all I have in my hand are weapon cards. Maybe a little weapon cards? No weapon cards. Come on. Yes, we are. Yes, I love you too. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Uh, let's ruin the weapon card so that I don't fucking use it. Uh. Yeah, this will do. Fever Sean Slot is a is one of those like it's high risk, high reward. Just just it's a it's a, 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 it's a big bada boom. Excuse me. Okay, good. So let's make some changes. Because I now have some decent equipment. Now I I'm going to keep the sellswords garb, and I'm going to swap this... 
I'm going to swap this out. Now, double rondel dagger? Double rondel? Really? Yeah, why not? I mean, this, this shield isn't really doing me very much good. And we've got two carries. Two characters are now level six. That's quite good. Um, I'll actually take this Never Forget because I have a weasel. Speaking of the weasel, we're going to give on another will for the weasel. Honestly, no, none of these. Corrosive Enamel is just not a good card. It's 15 damage to any character. And if they have... Oh, I see, to any character. Holy shit, I get it, I get it, I get it. So the purpose of Corrosive Enamel is that you put it on one of your own guys. And if they have any armor left, apply 10 Retaliate. Let's give that a try. Okay, cool. Oh, hello, acid test. So let's see what's happening. I have two coming into the bottom that are both hitting Mossfoot. Mossfoot will be fine. Gray has a brace and will be fine. We're all set. We're all set. So let's start working. I should be doing this first, shouldn't I? Is that a scratchy spot? Did I get a, did I get a scratchy spot on your ear? Yes, I did. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's try this out. Let's try this out. Um, ha. Okay. Cool. 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 He'll die from his bleed. I don't think I've... I, dude, I, I, I legitimately don't think I've ever actually read that all the way through on that card. I did not realize that's that's the purpose of that card. I get it. Okay, very cool. Uh, you can fuck off. Actually, I didn't really need to do that, seeing as how uh, I've got... I mean, I could take the damage and there's retaliate, but there is bleeding to deal with it. Big pain in the ass. Has to be two targets? Yes, it has to be two targets. Uh, the parish is one of the. It's the parish is is. Uh, it's a fascinating ruin. It's a fascinating ruin. This. So, so okay. So banish all cards in hand. Take five damage and deal f fifteen vitality damage for each banished card. And if the active character dies from this, it is double damage. That will be 30 vitality damage for each banished card. So this is something like uh, as a last ditch, I'm going to die anyway. But also, uh, if I have ample armor, this is a huge fucking hit straight to vitality. But unfortunately, it's not permanently in my deck. It is not a permanent. Ruin. And it's also incredibly, incredibly expensive. 
Uh, so, never forget, four damage times X, four damage X times for each banished card. We have a lot of banished cards. Another calculating strike, yes please. You know, I'm not going to go to that auger. I've had such bad luck with fortune tellers these days. Okay. Alright, so. I need to work on the front first, because these guys are... Uh, this means that... Uh, protected, that means that they are... Um, they're covering the dude immediately behind them. There we are. Sorry, there's not a whole lot to say about what's happening over here. So uh, I apologize for just, you know, ceasing all all conversation for for uh, a long stretch. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, I can. There's no reason not to. Well, there's probably some reasons not to. There we go. So he will die, and then move on to this guy. Okay, Islington. Well, let's get a few more cards into my Banish Heap, why don't I? And then a shot of Red Powder, and then... That's the reason why I took that card. It's, um, uh, uh, this, this, let me find this. So, where the fuck are you? Never Forget is an agnostic talent, which means it is available to anyone. Obviously, we'd be best on, for example, a mouse. But this it's uh, four damage X times for each banished card. This is one of two different cards that will deal damage per something that will, like, synergize extremely well with weasels. The other one is uh, per stack of bleed, which weasels throw around a shit ton of. So the... Um, Having a weasel in your party with uh, having a weasel in your party makes either of those cards a very very solid choice. can just be used as damage, right? Alright. And that'll be it. He'll die from his bleed. I don't really think I need a second brace. I don't think I need a second brace. And my deck is starting to get a bit unwieldy. Oop. Task Force. How you doing, fellers? Oh, it's these fuckers. Okay. The armored crossbowmen in the back need to die quickly. Quicklier than everyone else. They are the most dangerous people on this board because they are going to make my life a uh, living hell for having uh, for having any card draw at all. And I don't have a lot of card draw. Don't need 
Don't need, don't need. Fuck. Awful first round. so bad, but they are going to be putting on Overwatch. I fucking hate Overwatch. Alright. Thinking it over. Give me a few moments. definitely gonna die to his dots, but I, I, I don't want, I don't want. Fuck. I'm gonna start working on this guy. This man is gonna die to his dots. I want to start working on the crossbowman, but... Yes. Okay. So I can immediately start working on you. I fucking hate these guys. I cannot. I cannot afford, except maybe off of him. Off of him. So here's what this is. Here's what's going on. Is Overwatch. Uh, only these guys will throw it. Be very careful of these guys specifically for this. Whenever a character draws a card, they suffer one damage and one bleed for every stack of Overwatch. And remember, bleed does not tick down. We need to be super fucking careful about drawing cards. That being said, there is one character here who can, in fact, take all those hits with a smile, and that is Shipwright, because Shipwright has unholy. So if I have shipwright draw these cards, there we go. They're going to give me lots of bleed, and that bleed is just going to be converted directly into health, because shipwright is effectively invulnerable to bleed. There. Okay, that's one down. What are you doing? Okay, that's fine. <sighs> Fuck. Forgot. God. It's okay, it's only two bleed. It's only two bleed. It's not going to cause me too much of a problem before I can get uh, Strange Mist up onto it. Uh, okay. So I've got a Never Forget in hand. Which seems to me... Remember, if he does it, as long as he's the one who's drawing all the cards, it's okay. Because he is immune to this bleed. So what I want to do is... Oh god, that is way overboard. Uh, he is, he's been dead from his dots for a while now. Okay. Crap, shoot. This guy has three stacks of Overwhelm, but he will not take any damage. He will he will take no damage that is five or lower. Will this be a waste? No, it will not, thank God. It was enough I'm bad at math. It was enough to put it up over seven. So good. Thumbs up.
Interesting. It'll even swap ranks. That is very, very cool. And the reason, that must mean that the reason why it did not, it didn't uh, swap the dude before was because he had entrenched. Neat. That's a very cool card that I am going to do a lot more looking into. I see also, I should have thrown that onto a boy in the back. Hmm. Not, 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 not the end of the world, but not great. Interesting. I'm concerned about Islington in the back with their six stacks of bleed. But I think we, we're probably going to be done sooner rather than later, so we will... Be, I, I shouldn't worry. I should not worry. But what I should do is try to make a little better use of that Bloodthirsty off of Islington. Obviously that will do nothing. I already knew that was going to happen. I'm just basically putting some some quick uh, max health onto my, my person in the back. Quick hands. Person in the back. Islington is Taron Islington. Okay, my guy in the back. None of these. I would not mind modifying some talents. I also would not mind offloading some cards. Let's... Let's modify talents. Beaver approaches as you, approaches you draped in vibrant festival garments. His face is alight with a gleeful expression. Welcome, friends. Let I, Berivor the Illustrious, illuminate your soul. On this blessed night, I will offer you an opportunity to heal your past, to remedy your regrets. But I must warn, should you falter, you will lose a part of yourself forever. Uh, I actually don't mind Nefarious. I don't mind Sadist Cunning. I do mind Joint Strike. Uh, and you know what? I'm just going to forfeit it. And we won't have... Uh, he will just simply will not have uh, talent. That's fine. I'm alright with that. Are you letting this... Oh my goodness. Emma, the new girl, has just jumped up onto me. And Nemo, uh, the very spoiled boy, is not upset about it. Normally he's very territorial of us. But he... Oh, buddy. No. Yay. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I love I love my cats. I love my cats. <laughs> Smuggling gang! All right, so we're going to take those three black powders out of our deck. Lovely. Let me try that again. Lovely. The otter grins as he inspects the many full bags of powder. That's a sterling job you've done, friend. He motions one of the others forward. We heard you might need extra hands on a certain job you got going on. You're done right by us. We can either pay you well, or take one of our men till dawn. So, uh, first of all, all right, we're not gonna we're not gonna be keeping the black powder. We do not need it. Uh, we can take a grand, which we don't honestly need. We're gonna lose all of our black powder, which we're okay with, and recruit a level eight, level eight and level seven. <gasps> Ooh. Let's see what you got. Okay, so this is a no, because this has Assassin. Whenever you draw a Concealed Blade, transform it into a Poison Blade. We don't have anything that increases poison. We have thing that increases bleed. So it's a no from me, dog, which is unfortunate because she does have flow and exactly the right, exactly the right split of uh, stamina to will. This is much better. Much better, especially because there's a second never forget. Uh, I like the immunity to bleed. I don't like this. I don't like this. This uh, uh, armor. The rest of these things are crap. I don't care for. I don't care about plague doctor. I don't need entrench, and I don't like counterweight. Crossbow is not a very good. It's not a very. It's not a bad weapon, but it does have that pacified on it. And then this, Wrathful. I mean, uh, Fundamentalist is 
only half effective because we don't have any strikes. So the only thing that I really have is just the unholy. So let's see what else. Honestly, no to this. No to this too. Not this either. Shit. Oh well. I'm not taking any of them. This I will take. 1,000 experience down the line is going to be... Almost everybody levels up. Oh, all four characters level up. Good. All right, so... Deep breath. And, uh, yeah, you know what? Fine. Fine. Energetic is fine. That's just an extra stamina. That's all right. We've got ten stamina already. First of all, I am definitely doing six... Uh, six stamina. Oh, please. Give me something good. Whenever you draw this character's weapon card, spawn a concealed blade to hand. Yeah, all right. That's fine. That I'll take it. I'll take it. The other option is stoic. Whenever this character plays a card costing will or uses their ability, they gain 10 vitality, which is quite nice. But we have other means of uh, replenishing health. Uh, hmm. Whenever this character moves or swaps positions, both characters gain 15 armor, which would be great if I had a lot of movement cards, which I don't. Uh, however, her being on the front row and having Unholy, I will fucking take it and also take another stamina. That's for this. Synergize. I'll fucking take your Synergize. Absolutely. I'm going to take this Hidden Gem and then the Guarded Transport. Another fucking negative stamina cost. How lovely. How, how, oh. Hmm. I'm going to put it on to digging deep, maybe? Digging deep? And then, digging deep is just, it's a two stamina card that regains two stamina, meaning it is a net cost of zero. But it also means that I, I, uh, I don't, well, yeah. Obviously, I don't need three stamina to play the card, now that it costs two. Well, hey, yeah. Uh, this crypt is also pretty interesting. I'm going to skip the guarded transport and see what's going on in the crypt. This is, the crypt is a, it's another Iris encounter. And I don't remember what this will be if I don't have Iris. Don't worry, friend, the wolf remarks as he flashes you a Blackfoot brooch. I was sent as part of the advance party. Then we got wind of some catacombs under the city leading straight to the keep. When we stumbled upon this, I figured this had to lead to those tunnels. But the others weren't so sure. What do you say? We're going to explore. It's worth a shot. The wolf nods excitedly before hurrying down the stone tunnel. The walls are lined with statues of wolves in rugged cloaks, their hands clasped in various deliberate poses. You turn a corner and find yourself presented with a large stone chamber. Several statues encircle the space, the rough walls lined with a thick, dark moss. At its center sits a stone table illuminated by a stray shaft of light. A group of cloaked figures huddle around, clearly embroiled in argument. The wolf readies his dagger as he steps into the chamber. Before he even gets a few paces forward, another robed form leaps from the shadows, driving a blade under his cuirass. Oh no! As the assailant kicks him free, uh, kicks him free of his cruel weapon, the group turn towards you. So normally, what happens here is this dude gets seized by spirits and murdered. So apparently, this wolf is just, just gonna die. He's just doomed, no matter what you do. There's no running from this. All right, cool. Ooh. Huh. This is an interesting encounter because all of these guys, all of these guys are, uh, they're, they're all, these are all, uh, Iris specific. Whenever this character deals damage to a spirit, they gain one. Okay, good. So there's no spirits. We don't got to worry about that. In the back row, we know the tormentors are actually kind of a big deal because anytime I draw a ruin, uh, they're going to throw panic around. And I don't care for that. All right, so let's begin. First of all, let's just let's just consume all of the. Uh, uh, we're gonna consume all of our. Just get the fucking panic out of the way. Nope, not going to use ruins, because I don't want any more ruins in my deck, do I?
Okay, it's gonna have to do. I love having a second dude in the front row with Unholy. That is just great for me. And I also love that I'm finally at a point where I am filling my hand. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'll do that later. As soon as I have ruins in my hand, I can now convert them into wrens, which are not ruins. Okay. I, uh, uh, useful. It's good. So let's see. don't have any in my hand right now. That should be him. He's done. Okay, good. Next. 15 and 15. You're not going to be hitting. You're not going to be doing anything bad. Alright, good. I'm going to start working on you. Oh, fuck's sake, you're fucking... I didn't pay attention to the... panic. Ugh, alright. Now you'll take damage from this thing. This is what ha I'm an old man. This is what happens when I, when, I, when I sit and play video games for this long. I just stop paying attention, apparently. Alright, so... Does anyone need heals? Yes, Islington does need heal. And... not going to attempt fate. I have an opportunity to kill it. I'm just going to fucking kill it. Hmm. The, the, the constant panics are hugely, hugely annoying, so I'm going to go after this Tormentor next, I think. Yes. Yes. That'll do. Alright, so... Being a bit sloppy. Just a bit, though. Okay. While I uh, while I do appreciate the ten the the usefulness of having ten uh, ten retaliation on demand, I don't think it's enough damage to be worth picking up again in the future. I don't think I'm going to be taking that card. As, uh, I don't think I'm going to be taking that card again. I, I is what I'm saying. But this other one that ruins two cards and then swaps dudes around—that is, I, I, that I feel I am definitely going to be. But oh, that's all I had in my. Okay, then. <laughs> this is what you get when you don't pay attention, Alex. XP. Making your way through... Oh! Hum. Okay. Now I remember this. So, what I've just gotten is... Uh, ancient A third Kilderkin. Are you fucking kidding me? Whoop. You okay, girl? And you didn't find... Any you, you're okay with that? You're okay with that. Sorry, uh, uh, interacting with cats and cats interacting with each other. I have a, a new kitten. Her name is Emma, and she is amazing. And uh, my two boys have accepted her. And it's 
honestly making me fucking cry. It, it's it's I'm so goddamn happy. Come here, girl. Also, Emma is amazing. She is very, very smart. And it's interesting having a cat who is smart because, oh, you're in the room listening to me. They're not very smart. All right. So uh, uh, what I just picked up is Ancient Amulet, which is at the end of my turn, cards remain in my hand rather than being sent to the discard pile. So that's that's pretty fucking good. Uh, hang on just a moment. I've, I've already I've, I've done Kilderkin. Now this is this is the third Kilderkin. I'm not going to read it again. I don't think it's necessary. All right. Girl, don't be back there. There's a lot of wires down there. Come here, come here, come here. Here we go, girl. All right, so. Who owns this? You own this. So let's say, wish I had something that would drag itself back into my All right, we'll, we'll, So every time I get one of those red powders, I'll get the other red powder as well. Whoop. Hey, girl. Are you guys all hungry? Is that what's happening? Give me one second. I'm going to put some food down for them. I'll be right back. Was that not what you wanted? Did you just want attention? Oh, I think they just wanted attention. Oh, I'm almost done, boys. And girl, I'm almost done. All right, so thanks for your patience. This will be just a moment. Okay. My guys are feeling, considering the amount of healing they have, my guys are feeling kind of fragile, which is a concern for me. of you into the back, and then I'm going to convert all the wounds in my hand into wrens, which were not probably not as good as the, uh, oh no, that is not what I meant to do, oh no, oh no, oh, mistakes were made, that's all right, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I, cards on the table, you get it, cards, I am, I am more than a little exhausted right now. I did not have anything for last week, and I felt really bad about it, so I, I wanted to have at least something for this week. So, um, you know. Let's... I don't think... No, it's not going to be enough, because it's four damage, and I don't have any... Oh, I do. Vulnerable. Will this be five damage? Will this be five damage? Nope. Did not. Well, that sucked. All right. Not the end of the world, but it that is a very embarrassing. Okay. 
I am a little con I'm honestly a little concerned about my ability to take on the prince. I don't know if this is going. I legitimately do not think that this is going to be a successful run. I uh, the more I'm looking at how I'm doing, I am deeply concerned that I I am going to stall out hard on the prince. I'm leaning a little heavily on bleeds. Everything in that encounter is uh, bleed resistance, bleed resistant for at least a while. <sighs> Neither fuck. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Cultist wears are usually about bleeds. Juggler is usually about I don't remember. Let's see what the Lightfoots have to sell. Have for sale. Nothing. Absolutely nothing useful. Jesus Christ! The game is is paying me back for all of those Kilderkin. Two hesitation at once. So uh, I'm going to take five damage is what's happening. And I don't really need to heal anyone. Let's just gain high spirits, you know, for the buff. How close am I to next level? Not at all. Not even slightly. I'm not going to hit... All right. I'm not going to hit... I'm not going to hit level eight. I will not hit level eight before the warden. Okay. Back row still needs some heal. That could not... That's exactly what I needed. That's exactly what I was hoping to draw. Okay. I think this... Yeah. All right, so that will um, that'll completely make up for uh, a, a not amazing round one. None of these. Wait. Ruin all cards in hand. Deal five damage for each card ruined and then banish. Do I... Is that... Mm. Feels like leaning way too hard. Way too hard into ruins. I, uh, I'm i just... I'm going to stop pretending that uh, I am... Oh, God. Wow. So basically the very last possible encounter is the escape. All right, um, you enter the chamber to find a narrow canal, the water a dirty green. The boat you sent bobs in the water as the informant and his family throw what few belongings they could carry into it. The gate won't budge, the informant yells, pointing to a hefty iron gate, blocking passage to the river. We need more leverage. Help me haul it up with this. He holds out a length of iron chain out to you, and the other end affixed to the gate and dropped over an overhead beam. As you reach to take it, dozens of guards begin to flood out from a second entrance further down the corridor. It's further down the chamber. You are drastically outnumbered, but the narrow platform stops them from surrounding you. I like. I, I want to say again. I really like that one of the options there is we can just drop all of our chains and say "fuck this, have fun," and then just leave. We can just leave him to his fate right there, which I think is very funny. <laughs> ah, hell. All right. Well, honestly, focus fire is not going to be necessary. None of these guys have a lot of health. Alright, 
so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna knock away these barriers. So fuck this. And front row needs a little bit of health. Actually, I should have put that on uh, Islington in the back, but you know, whatever. I am not hurting for ways of healing. Okay. If you are doing this one, this encounter for the first time, it's, uh, what you, what, <clears throat> there's two things that you need to do. You need to, uh, you need to control the situation until, uh, the, the chain cards have come up at least five times. You need to play a chain cards at least five times. Every time it, uh, uh goes up by three. And unlike how this game was at, uh, uh when this encounter was added, there is no way you you can't you can't lose progress. You cannot lose progress on on the chains anymore. It used to tick down slowly, making this into just a nightmare of a fight. All you really need to do is you uh, just. I'm getting distracted by my kids charging around all over the, the room. It's great. Um, <clears throat> all you really need to do is you need to control. The dude's coming in. There's going to be a new guy every single round. By the time you are in this street, honestly, this should not be a, this. Honestly, this encounter really shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, just you know, it, it's it's you need to be able to kill at least one character that is generally between uh, forty and thirty health. It's not very strong. Not there's not a whole lot. It feels like they overcorrected. Frankly, this encounter used to be extremely difficult because a new guy jumps in every single round and even though they are very low health they can be very dangerous because it's this is the first a lot of the it's the first street bears that i mentioned that have that intrinsic bleed and that intrinsic bleed it comes out it's four bleed if the target has at least 16 16 Armor, something like that 16 it, it, it is it is somewhere between 15 and 19 armor i never remember However, you're going to notice that my front line has way more armor than that. So if I don't have, if if you don't have um, ways of dealing with bleed, this can in fact be a very dangerous fight. And also, oh yeah, nothing else. And also, you just need to be able to control uh, a steady stream of dude. Synergize, we're going to have, oh no, all right, that's all I got. All right, fuck it. The way that this used to work was every single round, this uh, the the gate counter ticked down by one, which I don't need to tell you how much that fucking sucks. I shouldn't need to tell you how much that fucking sucks, especially by the time you get by the time you get to this stage of the game you are quite likely to have, uh, I mean, four, four characters by this point in the game is not uncommon. Your deck is probably going to be between 45 and 55 uh, cards. You should be aiming for the, the low end of 45 to 50. I mean, that's, that's, that's not gospel, but you know, you don't want to have, you don't want to have a, a you don't want to have too many cards. It's very difficult, however, in this game to keep the amount of your cards under control because of uh, because every time you add in a new guy, you're adding in their weapon cards, you're adding in their uh, talent cards. If you are recruiting someone, if you're recruiting someone who's level like eight, if you noticed, they all had four fucking talent cards and some of them had two weapon cards. That's just adding, just dumping six additional cards into your deck. It's very, very difficult to keep it under control. So this encounter, which requires you to pull very specific cards out of your deck, and if you have not picked up any of the chains encounters, it's only two. You need to bring up two, specifically two of your 
uh, two cards out of your deck. We did not do that. We took, because my card draw is not great. It is, I mean, it, it it's kind of now, but it's still not really great. Because of that, I did not want to... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> 120 damage. Cool. Um, anyway, whatever. Just moving on. I lost track of whatever the fuck it was I was talking about. As the last guard falls, you just... Man well, yeah, I, I want to get through that encounter as quickly as possible, because I would like for this one, possibly, to be maybe like three and a half hours is a, is a nice amount, especially considering as how this is the second run of the day. Uh, as the last guard falls, you just managed to heave the iron gate high enough for the informant to push the boat out into the mouth to the mouth of the river. Your strength gives out just as they cross the threshold and you release the chain with a mighty crash. I owe you my life, friend! The informant shouts as the boat drifts on. Rest assured, I will uphold our agreement. Make your way to the high gate at dawn. You will have your vengeance. That's pulling four cards out of our deck. 46 is not a bad number. Oh, God, no. Okay, so we're not taking fatalism, obviously. And let's see who our last opportunity for recruitment is going to be. Three level sevens. Nope. 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 No. Not great. Nope. Uh, eccentric. I, I actually have had the opportunity to play around with it. The because it is a random card from your banished pile. It is either a. It, this is either a great passive or a useless passive. And also, if you can draw eight or more additional cards in a turn, like. You're very often I found that my hand was just completely full and the card did not, I mean, it didn't pull into my hand. So not Mirabelle Trestlefort of the illustrious Trestlefort family. Maybe. Big, 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 fat maybe. I like Steadfast on a bear. I like Impervious and Stoic, and I also like Hardy. Whenever this character is healed, they gain an additional five vitality. It is a bear specific. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, well, these talents aren't terrible, and uh, Gilly Cartwright has not wasted too much will on uh, uh, hasn't wasted too many level ups on will, so this is a big maybe. And uh, I don't really need another focus fire. I don't need a foul wound. I don't need any of this. I don't need any of this. So let's go ahead and take you, Gilly. Let's arrange. Let's arrange. I'm going to put my bear in the back. We're actually going to change their position. So these two are now next to each other. I have a bear in the top row with Steadfast and a quarterstaff. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I have a choice. At this point, I can swap in the Cell Swords Garb for uh, 10 armor every round. I think I want to keep the Restoration. I think I want to keep the Restoration. It's not nearly as much armor. I'm going to do it. I have other means of gaining health back anyway. So, this is going to be my final, my final party. I wish I'd picked up more than one Akimbo, frankly, with this amount of... Uh, Actually, no. No, we're just going to go. No, again, he said. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. We're good. I, I won't bother. I won't bother explaining the, 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 the argument I just had with myself. None of it is necessary. None of it is relevant. Uh, um, <clears throat> I was going to try to change around. He said immediately doing the thing he just said he wasn't going to do. I, I was going to try to move around Gray's main hand weapon because he does have uh, rivalry. However, rivalry means he doesn't necessarily need to have a very powerful main hand weapon. Rivalry is going to fill in for that. Okay. Hello, buddy. Yes, I know. I know. All right, so... First, the first card every turn is going to be banished by the Ender, Banner, by the Ender Bannerman. So let's make sure that whatever that is. Yes, buddy, I hear you. I love you very much. Let's bring my red powders. Okay, we're going to synergize our red powders together so every time we draw one, we draw both. We are also...
they're also going to start loading up that bannerman. I'm going to start work on that back row. I'm going to start work on that back row. And I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put the... Uh, I'm going to start the work first, and then... Yeah, Shockwave 2. For now, at least. Also, not going to allow the warden. I don't want a. Um, I don't want to accidentally trigger the warden's uh, uh, champion special ability. That's okay. You all play. Oh god, you guys are playing. <gasps> I'm gonna die. I love you so much. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Just very happy. Ugh. All right. Well, not a good. Not a good round one. Not, not, not a good round one, frankly. Not a good round one. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay, so again, we're gonna make sure that the first card played is in fact something that uh, will just will banish itself. Okay, now we need to start work on the board. This guy will die to his dots. I don't know what to do. Okay, let's see. So first of all, first of all, I can't get bleeds on the warden just yet, so let's get bleeds on the people that I can, because I want more things in my... I want more shit in my banish for Never Forget. Alright, I need to pull some card. Give me a second. I'm going to put this in the front so that I, it, it preserves it and also so that I don't uh, trigger the Warden's shit. Warden is, um... Has this. You have this? Alright, at least it vanishes. That's fine. Okay, so let's brace so that you ignore that first hit. Also get rid of the racket Claw. Shit. That's alright. It'll still be in my hand next round. And so will everything fucking else. So first of all... Bannerman is going to die from his dots. Okay, that's a fucking good-ass hit. Fifteen. Well, it's gonna stay in my hand. It's gonna stay in my hand. I want... I'm banishing this out also. I don't want... I don't want anything extra in my hand because I'm not discarding. about to get dragged into my front row. But at the very least, it's going to be the last thing. Because the warden is in the lower, is in the, the, the last spot, it's going to be the last thing that happens, so they will not take damage from... The halberdier is actually going to die anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Let's have... So, um, invigorating blow. Six stacks of overwhelm. Four stacks of restoration, and two... Uh, stamina back. Actually, should have done that with Shipwright so that he could uh, cast his You Shall Not Pass. Eh. 
Okay. I'm gonna take it a little bit in the pants. But... Just a little bit. I legitimately do not think that I'm going to be able to kill the prince this time. I'm... 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 I am... I'm having some... Uh, I'm having some problems that I can very plainly see. See if I can get. I'm trying to prep for a big fucking hit on the warden. I think that's about gonna be gonna be just about all I can do. Can I get any more? Nope. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, this. Okay. And everybody in my front row is actually not doing super bad. We're all set. We're all done. Okay. Yikes. Big fucking hits. These, uh, the halberdiers in this, uh, the halberdiers in this, uh, in this encounter, I'm not sure if it's something that they get themselves or if they get it off of the warden, but every time they, when they shift you around like that, the reason why your guys die is because he is also distributing a huge amount of strength onto those halberdiers. So the the normal the normal first three actions that he takes, the first thing he does is he jumps, he hits somebody and then jumps to the back. The person that he has hit is going to take on nine goddamn stacks of uh, winded and thus will basically not be able to do anything next round. The next thing he's going to do is he's going to hit your front round that will push him in all into the back row and your back row comes into the front row and every person who shifts uh, position increases uh, their halberdiers strength by a lot. Is it this up here? Zone of control. Here it is. Whenever an opponent, an opponent moves, gain three strength. So um, six opponents are moving uh, times three equals he just basically fucks up your back row if you don't if your back row is lightly armored they just carve him to pieces uh, let's start work on the back shall we i'm gonna get rid of the halberdier the halberdier is the most the halberdier is the scariest person that they have so we're just going to we're just we're just we're just going to stop him from existing there we go Okay there, Islington. Not not really. Thirty and thirty, he's done. Okay. throw a truly, truly, like, just just a uh, an irresponsible amount of red powder onto this poor dead man. All right, we're all set. A moment of silence.
Thanks for your patience. I am back. I took the opportunity to uh, uh, clean up after my cats. And here we go. Again, the artwork in, the, in this game is just fucking staggering. It's so good. Spymaster! Let's see if this one actually is a problem. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think... I, I'm... I'm... I'm detecting some real issues with, um... With... Power. Hold on one second. There we go. Hey, buddy. Come on up. Come on up. There we go. I could be, I could be catastrophizing, but uh, I, I am feeling like I don't have, like I don't, I'm feeling like I just don't have enough. I don't have enough damage. I don't have enough. I'm always, actually now, especially lately, I, I'm very, generally very concerned about relying on weasels for damage, for for uh, as as primary damage dealers because um, all of the kingsmen. In all the king's guards in the next encounter, in the prince's encounter, they all have magnificent plate, which means they will not take any bleed until I get their armor down to a certain degree. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> How very stupid! Why, why would I even do that? I was not paying attention. I just got him into the back rank so that I did not have to worry about him. And now here I am, worrying about him. Actually, probably not. I might be able, I might be able I might be able... Can I actually do this? Can I pull this off? Can I just kill him in the first round? Yeah, I absolutely can. Okay. Well, all right then. That makes everything a lot easier. Okay, so... I'm going to say again that I, I feel like I'm going to have... I am, I am going to have some real problems on this fight. I am saying this in advance... Because if if I lose, that's it. I I, I have lost. I'm not going to start another uh, another run. I apologize, but I, I I don't have it in me. I'm an old man, and I have other things. I have errands. I have to run. All right. So <clears throat> I'm making excuses because I I'm I'm not confident. I'm not confident. I'm not confident in my team. I'm not confident in my uh, in my build. I should probably be a lot more confident than I am. Honestly, I really probably should. We've we've been through an awful lot, and uh, I feel like I'm disrespecting my my intrepid team of angry furries by fucking constantly second guessing them. They have taken me through an awful lot thus far. I'm sure they can take me through to the end. All right, let's go, guys. damage is going around. Well, okay, so the first, the, here's, I never, it's not really, it's not really worth it to look around to see who is, you know, what, what damage is going where for the first round, because Obelisk. Obelisk is, Obelisk is the single most dangerous person on this side. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about all the rest of the shit that happens on this. Uh, uh, every, all six dudes are attacking at once, and all of my shit is one Stamina more expensive as long as these three guys are alive. Also, the prince... I li Here I am doing the thing I literally said I wasn't going to do. Uh, and the prince cannot die as long as any of the king's guard are up. The shadows are only going to be doing uh, big chunks of damage and also main wolves. They look really fucking cool. Obelisk is the single most dangerous character on this side. You should endeavor to focus him the fuck down. He needs to go, because the first thing he's going to do is shuffle my front line. They are going to be shuffled, well, yeah, not randomly. Applies to and moves swaps opponent's rank to the back rank. So, let's see, what are you going to do? Nothing. He is still going to be hitting the same two people. You're going to be hitting Bear. You're also going to be hitting Bear. Bear is in trouble. Bear is in legitimate trouble. 
is it going to be worth it for me to actually take some time to... It may be worth it for me to take some time to just try to break these fuckers, but I don't have... I don't have enough stamina. Not the end of the world. Not amazing. Obelisk. Putting this on obelisk. Okay. Well, that's a start. Okay, there's my red powder. Okay. Whoo. I'm gonna need to take a breath. That, that, that was, that was everything. That was absolutely everything. I, I take back what I said. I believe that I should be fine. I believe that I should be fine. Now that I have some stability. Theoretically. Theoretically. Oh boy. None of these guys are load-bearing. I may... I may lose... I may lose guys. But I think... I think I should be okay. But it's still in my draw pile. Nothing good. Okay. guy's nearly dead. I just want him dead. Okay. It's one last shadow. Uh, next is going to... I see. It's not in the draw. It is. It, I'm going to get some bleed on my bear. But it's a bleed on a bear, so it's not really going to be that big of a deal. Can you afford this? No, you cannot. Okay, that's fine. Alright, Endress is next. That's not actually going to delay his turn at all. He's still going to act. They're all going to act. <sighs> Saving the never forget in my back pocket for just right now. Yikes. Oh, fucking yikes. Hang on. First of all, I can banish this hidden strike and use it to pull back focus fire. And I can put that focus fire on Endress. I, should, I, I, I needed to pay attention to what was actually in my draw pile for me to synergize. <sighs> not enough. I have not enough of everything. Gray may be in trouble, but I think I'm okay. Hey, buddy. Yikes. One second. Okay. Hang on just a minute. 
Jeez, you just really want to be in my hand, don't you? Okay, let's get a brace. You Let's see if we can fucking kill you. Twenty three, not quite enough. Not quite enough. Not quite enough. This is gonna do fifteen damage to Bear. I'm not concerned about it. It's just gonna hit against his armor. I was just about to say, where the fuck is my strange mist at? Okay, feeling a little better. Feeling a little better. So first of all, let's get some red powder on this front line. Because Endris is going to die from his bleed. So that one's gone. And, uh, let's see. Are you? Going... Oh, I see. It seems to be stuck in my hand, even though it is gone. All right, cool. Okay. Remember what I said about not being confident in being able to beat the prince? Never mind. seem to be able to play this. It seems to be bugged. That's fine. We're done. Let's pull the prince nice and close. Nope, not really. Nope, not really that either. Oh, hey, look, it's a focus fire. Shit, where the fuck are all of my good cards? I think we're about done. Okay. is really, really trying to kill Gilly. I think maybe the prince just doesn't like bears. He might be racist against bears because, as I recall, there was a very, one of the much older runs I have on my channel. Um, there was one with a, there's a particular bear named Willow who, as I recall, the prince murdered and it made me very, very upset. Like, very, actually extremely upset. Goodbye. I can't believe I, I am actually legitimately shocked that uh, that that I did that. <coughs>
It felt very sloppy to me. My deck was uh, uh, felt a little unfocused. Like I was trying to go for ruins while also at the same time trying not to go for ruins. And um, normally, leaning into bleeds doesn't really work against the prince. Uh, it was honestly due mostly to shipwright and moss foot that we prevailed, and also three the three red powders. The prince lays slouched against the base of the throne, clutching his wounds. Clutch. Let me try that again. The prince lays slouched against the base of the throne, clutching his wounds. So does Landon plan to burn my city too, or conquer it? You don't respond. Our houses at ward for so long, he spits, still managing to draw breath. So many years of bloodshed. My father dreamt of peace, but he could never see a means to it. It brought him great sadness and longing, so I vowed it would be my legacy. I would bring us peace, make my father proud. Then Landon came back to Black Church. My father began to... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> but then Landon came back to the Black Church. Came back to Black Church, but then Landon... Oh my goodness gracious. But then Landon came back to Black Church. My father began to regain hope. He'd say, the great Landon was a leader with whom we could broker a peace. He spoke with such admiration and love, love he had never directed at his son, for a man he'd never met. <laughs> his voice takes a darker tone. So I burned your Black Church to the ground until the sky went black, until you couldn't breathe through the ash. But when I returned from that victory, I did not see pride in his eyes. No, he wouldn't even meet my gaze. Ruin, he kept saying as if in a trance. You've brought ruin and nothing more. He saw, he foresaw all of this, that Landon would come for me, that you would all come for me. He noted more virtues and qualities of your people that night than he'd ever mentioned to me. I hadn't bear to hear it, so I did what I did. And that was a word for my senior card, the festival having to the A strange stillness washes over him. So what'll it be? He continues after a long pause. What fate awaits me? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fucking murder him. We're gonna chop off his head and throw him over the side again. Uh, I just because it does bear repeating. The very first time you manage to beat the prince, you should take mercy. It's uh, each of these three endings gives you a different reward. Uh, ruin <clears throat> gives you the ability to ruin five cards at the start of the game. Justice is. So pointless, I'm not going to bother explaining it again. And Mercy is five re-rolls. The answer is Mercy, objectively, even if it is narratively unfulfilling. But we already have done this, so we're just going to fucking murder him. So my soul shall burn too, he growls. Perhaps that is fitting. As you draw your blade, the sky... Do I promise I'll never do that again. I promise I will never do that again. As you draw your blade, the sky darkens. The light of dawn fades from the great hall. A flock of crows rush across the black sky. It is done. And so are we. Uh, this one, four and a half hours. Oh, for God's sake. I tried. I tried. Although, actually, I think that the actual run would have been closer to three hours, if not for the first uh, abortive attempt. Um, this went better than I expected. I do want to point out, by the way, that the two, that the two rabbits, one of which male, one of which female, actually do have... Uh, I don't know if it's just a different... I don't know if it's all male rabbits have this face and all female rabbits have this face, but it's a uh, if it is, if it's not just like a different face, a very subtle amount of uh, sexual dimorphism is phenomenal. Uh, it, it, she doesn't really look like you know. They didn't give her tits. I'm saying I, I like I, I appreciate I appreciate the care and attention that has gone into this design. Although I'm pretty sure that this is just one of two faces that rabbits can spawn with. I'm rambling. We did much better than I thought that we were going to. It did not turn out to be a dedicated ruin run. I still have yet to do one of those. Klaatu, if you're still listening to this, I truly apologize. I intended, and it just didn't happen. I'll try it again. In the meantime, until the next good time, I love you all. And, uh... Oh, hey! Huh. Okay. Well, that's my... My, uh, my hair has finally got to max tier. That's interesting. Cool. All right. So that's going to be it for me for today. And I will see you at the next good time. Good night, everybody. Call your mom. She misses you.